Hello everyone and welcome to this second semi-finals of the Let's Go EV Pikachu tournament. Um, we have, well, we, we are supposed to have three runners for you today. Um, Headstrong, Dynam and Trivaria. Um, three really good runners. Um, but, well, we don't really know what's really happening yet, but uh, Headstrong said before, like, she needed some extra time, but she hasn't shown up yet. Um, and Dynam and Rivaria have previous engagements. They have to do the GDQ hotfix show um, right after this. Um, think fast. So, um, yeah, we really have to uh, get this show started. So uh, if we hear something from Headstrong and um, we'll let you know about it. But for now, we'll, we are just going to start this race with just two people, sadly. Um, my name is Sheep, Sheepia. Uh, I'm not here today alone. Uh, together, uh, I have Sandy with me, Sandy Beach. Yep. I, and I'm very happy, Sheep, that we, we at least have the two Pikachu runners. Uh, uh, I, I believe Headstrong was also running Pikachu. No. But, no? <laughs> no, Headstrong's like only ever played Eevee. Okay, well. But yeah, Dynam and Triv are both relatively new. I think like within the past year to the scene. And mm -hmm. they've they both sort of like um just been around the same, you know, times getting better together. And I'm very excited to see them play off now because whoever wins this um is going to be in finals. So it's the finals implications are we have Echi and New Amber. And then one of these two new runners, Dynam or Trivaria, most likely, uh, going to be facing off against them. And I think that's like a really compelling narrative for the finals. Yeah, and it really shows that, like, I believe especially Dynam said that it was really, um, like, preparing for this tournament, and, like, really improved for this tournament, uh, doing a lot of the races just before the tournament started. Yeah, I think Dynam like really got into it um when the tournament was announced. Yeah, so that would be a really nice story to like yeah. th that's that sort of story to get into the finals. Dynam beats Echi in the finals. <laughs> we all want it, right? Yes, we all want the story. Okay, so they're actually getting into the game now. I'm going to guess they're gonna name their trainers one. Which character will we pick is the real question. Girl oh, one. Oh, both girl one. Yeah, I, I know Triv, Triv at least will never uh, pick boy one. Yeah, and I guess Dynam's also of a similar like view that it's optimal in races to go girl one. Apparently it's yeah. luckier. I think girl three has the best winning rate. I think that's just for TPAP. I'm not sure if that's overall. But it wouldn't surprise me because I would expect the people clicking Girl 3 are going to be the people most familiar with the game. But okay, let's see their options menus. Because I think like this is the first part of the run where you're going to see, like, are they nervous? Are they feeling comfortable with the game? Um, this is like the first spot a minute in where you can just be like, oh, I don't feel good. Yeah. And there you see it for Triv. Yeah. Just like the annoying, like you don't you don't really have like the Joy-Con, like how does the stick move up yet? And uh, both of the runners did say beforehand that they were a bit nervous, but mostly for the, the hotfix show afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing two races today. Um, this one and then about half an hour after this race is concluded, they'll be racing each other again um, on the Games Done Quick channel with, um, in, I think, Scarlet and Violet Victory Road. Yeah. So, okay, they're both going to be catching their Pikachus. Um, and the, the nice thing about Pikachu... Versus compared to like the Eevee version is 
Pikachu on the catch screen here, we'll see in a second, can either be 26 or 27 CP. Um, what this means is 27 CP indicates that you have a neutral nature, like bashful, docile, quirky, um, serious, uh, the other one. Um, they both have 26 though, so this means that they're going to have a nature that reduces one stat and increases another. Um, what this means is they both now have to make the decision of do they check the nature after they get the Pikachu in the lab and possibly reset, or do they just go and save that four seconds, but maybe have a minus attack Pikachu and have to deal with it? Yeah, it's... Uh... What do you think they will check, or are they just going to run? I don't know. I think... I think it depends. Um, it depends on their own personal risk assessment and thinking, like, do they think that they can make up that same amount of time, about 40 seconds of resetting, with a minus attack Pikachu? And the, like, what, less than 20% ch chance it happens? I think, like, Dynamo will run a minus attack. And I know Triv was saying that she had a minus attack that she reset. And it didn't say... She was banking on the other person losing time, and that didn't happen, so she might be more um, hesitant to reset. And we're seeing Dynam has the girl Pikachu. Both checking. Lax Lax and relaxed, so no real advantage for either player here. Both plus defense. Uh, Dynam minus special defense, Triv minus speed. It's okay. It's not bad, but they're both runnable. I think what I, I saw one of them was siestas, I think. Um, characteristic doesn't really, it does mean something in that you're more likely to get AVs in those stats, but with a relaxed and lax Pikachu, they're not going to be drastic enough to make a difference. You're going to still more likely just, you know, get naturally like two or three attack AVs where they matter. Um, Triv's nature is probably a little bit better in that minus speed is better for Pikachu because you already have base 120 speed or something. Um, and you don't need more. So assuming it's not alert to sounds, you will have most of your AV is going to the other five stats, which are useful. Whereas Dynam's going to still have the chance for speed AVs. Yeah, and because also, well, well, we'll see it later on, but uh, Pikachu does have a move that will be used a lot that doesn't really care about speed. Yeah, and there's and there's only one fight where the minus speed matters, and on that fight you can just X attack and use that move, Zippy Zap, to avoid getting attacked by a Golbat. So, like, the worst implication of a minus speed Pikachu is you buy one more X attack in Cerulean, which is fine. Yeah, and for um, yeah, and I think like. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the yeah, it's the, the 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 yeah Pikachu. I mean, that's the the nature of the Pikachu run, right? You also use other Pokemon where Pikachu isn't really like at its strongest, so that will also take away a bit of like the need for specific stats. Yeah, the um, the fun thing here is we get to see both trainers with the four damage tackle on their Pikachu. Which is something when you're doing PB attempts is not something like you want to see. You see it and you're like, you sigh because you know it can't be plus attack. 
But okay, they're both out of the lab at a decent time. And they're both, you know, gonna say no to this... To the... Trace's sister or somebody who's gonna, like, tell you to dress up Pikachu and you're gonna say no. Dynamo was to... got to... snipe there by the Frittata. Yeah, for people who are not... Uh, really familiar with this game, you see the Pokémon in the overworld. They were just walking around. So you don't have to be afraid of walking through grass or like less that you get an encounter, but it will just pop up and sometimes run at you. They can be difficult to dodge. And then we'll see Dynam's AV here on this level up. Special attack, so that's good. And then Triv gets attacked, attack. so that's good. You will take these. Yeah, as long as Triv gets um, level 16 before Misty, that will be at least two attack AVs, and if she gets another one or two in there, that'll be 100% KO rate on Misty's um, Starmie. So seeing the level 5 to 6 AV go into attack is so like relieving as a Pikachu runner. Because that Misty, that Misty fight is the most stressful thing, especially in a race, because you just don't want to faint there. Yeah, as a EV runner myself, that fight isn't normally that dangerous. Yeah, the worst thing that happens there is you get Scald burned and waste time generally, right? Yeah, and you have to like be really unlucky at like minus special defense to have a chance of dying to it. Yeah. yeah but that's uh, like the interesting thing, like these are two... the same games, sort of, but... or at least the first half, it's like really different in how the... like, you I mean you catch somewhat the same Pokémon? But still, like, the, the fights are like pretty different. And yet the time is still really close yeah like there's only so many turns you can take in the battles and like it just comes out to like eevee takes more times to learn moves too so that's a detriment to it compared to pikachu only learning one move as opposed to like eevee learning four moves from tutors and having to go out of its way to do that um eevee saves some time on the first fight ideally or pikachu loses a little bit of time there but eevee like gains some turns elsewhere, but Pikachu gains, like, you know, faster ride Pokemon early on. It's annoying how balanced this game is between the versions. <laughs> okay, we're gonna see them both now. Coming up to the lure. And now we get to get into the first catching portion of the game. The ideal things that people are looking for in this section are going to be Caterpie, Weedle, um, maybe Oddish if you see it early enough, and then uh, Bulbasaur, obviously, because it's a rare spawn, and will and will give you an extra catch or two. It looks like Dynam's getting that first throw. Weedle. Ooh, a breakout for Triff. Ooh. Gets it on the second try. So some uh, good news uh, for the people watching. It looks like uh, Headstrong is going to join this race. Um, since she did start later, um, 
they're going to do like we're going to show, but she'll be on a separate timer. Yeah, um, so she'll so be a bit, bit difficult to compare each other. But we still get to see the race. And it will be very uh, exciting in the end. So w one thing that I do think is interesting between like the games, like looking at the differences, like a lot of the things, like you would ra ra uh, gladly like trade, like for Eevee, you would uh, rather have an Ordish than a Bell Sprout, and for like okay, yeah, you learn you learn two extra moves for for Eevee, but Pikachu would gladly learn those moves. Yeah. It's just something uh it's like you you really want the things that are better in the other game. The big the big thing here between Pikachu and Eevee on Brock is Pikachu can t get a two turn fight by using Oddish as absorb, which is buffed to forty base power in this game. Um Giga Drain doesn't exist in Gen 1, so they moved Absorb up to 40 and Giga Drain up to 75 or something. Just to like get people those powers. This also means Oddish is very strong early game, whereas Eevee gets Bellsprout, which has Vine Whip. Um, so it's not really useful for Brock's gym because Eevee's double kick basically does the same amount or more. So Eevee does like what, a five turn fight? Whereas yeah. Pikachu can get away with a two turn fight. Um, there are three turns in the worst, huh? Yeah. Well, the worst is you faint. I've had that happen before, but. The like the worst best case scenario is you have like a 19 special attack, uh, level nine, and you two turn the the onyx. But yeah, um, this is one of those places where it's like Pikachu will generally pull ahead at e at Brock. But over the course of the run, these these things sort of just balance out. Yeah. And so um, we, we didn't explain it, but uh, we do see uh, both runners catching a lot of uh, Pokemon, and there's also a Pokedex on stream. Um, the reason for that is uh, in this game, every gym has a gym requirement to be able to enter the gym. Um, for Brock, uh, you have the requirement of having a water or grass Pokemon. It's impossible to get a water Pokemon unless you're trading. So you need a grass Pokemon. Uh, there are two options, either the Bellsprout, Bellsprout slash Ordish, which are version exclusives, or Bulbasaur. Um, so you really need to catch one of those, uh, otherwise you can't enter Brock's gym, so you can't continue. Um, and there are a few other, but the big one for this game really is Koga's gym. You need to have 50 catch, uh, caught Pokemon in your Pokedex. Um, and uh, yeah, for that they really need these catches. So there's a really like a catch route with plant Pokemon. You can see them. They're now on Dynam screen. Like the the darker blue ones he caught already, and the lighter blues are plant catches. Currently he has 49 plants because there's still so much room with, with extra spawns and such. Um, and also you we really need the EXP. Battles really don't give EXP in this game. So you really need to level up uh, via catching, and um, you can get a lot of EXP from catches. Yeah, I think like the first bug you catch in Forest is level seven. Uh, one controller, excellent, gives you 54 EXP, and the first trainer in Forest gives you 12 for knocking out its Caterpie. So, okay, okay, cool. We have Headstrong starting. Um, yeah. A new Going challenger a entered the arena. I just thought that Headstrong's screen was 
die. Adams and Dynamo had just reset for some reason, and I was very scared. <laughs> and started running Eevee. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh, oh no, what's going on? But yeah, okay, so Headstrong is going to start here in a few seconds. We'll be on a bit of a delay, so what'll happen is um, Dynamo and Triv will probably finish first, um, and then we'll uh, finish off with Headstrong. Um, we'll get them in to talk, most likely. Like, I would expect that there's not going to be a 17 minute gap between finishes. Um, but we'll have them talk for a bit, and then they'll be off to do their GDQ show. Um, and so then we'll finish off with Headstrong. I, then, I do hope they finish before Headstrong. Yes, it, I, I would expect a, I would expect a DNF personally before um, an 18 minute gap. But now we get to go through the same things with Headstrong, um, as. Dynam and Triv are doing shopping. I'm going to check if they buy X Defend. Um, this is one of the big things with race strats is you can buy an X Defend. Okay, Dynam is buying X Defend for the um, the final Geopony fight. In, in Pikachu, you buy it in Pewter for some reason, just for the bag. And it basically means you're going to consider doing one controller fight at that point in time. Whereas, if you don't buy it, you can do two controller fight that loses a few seconds, but is a lot safer. Um, and I think Dynam said the other day that the strategy going into this race is basically full send it um, and try to go for a PP as like much as possible. And I think especially now with the like with the sort of asynchronous nature of this race now, that's going to be even more relevant because you're going to need to put up the best time before Headstrong can see what your time is at the end of the race. Yeah, you you don't really know what your timing is going to be. Like, you have some indication, but like, probably not enough time to see if you can actually like go low fights or see if you are ahead or behind. Yeah, you'll have to be like taking notes of like you have to look at your own splits compared to like where Headstrong is at that point 18 minutes ago. Um, so it can get very difficult to like judge if you're ahead or not. Um, and we're also seeing Dynam get one of the differences between Pikachu and Eevee here. Um, on this Route 3, there's some bonus Pokemon that can spawn in Pikachu that are Mankey, Sandshrew, and you know, potentially the rare Charmander. Whereas in Eevee, it's only Ekans or Charmander. Um, so Dynam just getting the Sandshrew there and securing another catch. I believe that puts his plan up to 50. Yeah. Yeah, you can expect to have like at least one of the two, right? Yeah, I've had lots of runs. I've had lots of runs with neither. Um, Lots of runs with both, and lots of in one run with like both and Charmander. Um, not having either is not unheard of, but it's like really nice just to get at least one of them. And you can also catch Rat here if you want. Um, it's not a bad idea, um, especially since you got if you didn't get Rat in the previous patch of Grass. You can get it here and get a little bit more EXP if you're not feeling great on your EXP, so it's not a bad catch. Um, Headstrong going through the starter catch. We mentioned before that Pikachu has 27 or 26 CP. Uh, Eevee doesn't. Um, just the way the stats are distributed, the way nature's work on Eevee stats, means that it's not going to get a difference in CP based on its nature if it's a plus and minus nature. So Drift, get, drift getting another breakout. Yeah, Triv getting the Mankey as well, the counterpart to the Sandshrew for um, Dynams. Dynams. Dynam Sandshrew, so they both got one of these bonus catches. And Dynam going through Moon. Already passed the Bellsprout Trainer. Has to go around this, this girl. Runs into a Zubat, which is preferable to running into the optional. And it's going to run from the Zubat. Okay, Headstrong's Eevee. Docile. 
likes to thrash about. So that's good. That's just a neutral EV with maybe a little bit extra. With maybe a little bit extra attack. I saw she has a level 8 Clefairy, and I was very confused how Triv or Headstrong would have a level 8 Clefairy, but then I realized Etiquette in the chat was talking about the optional. Um, yeah, and I, I assume he, he knows. would know that based on the trainer data that he collected and not from running into the Clefarian accident. I, I think from the, the the trainer guides. Yeah, exactly. It's in there. I think he did a trainer guide run and he faltered there. Yeah. Okay, so we see Dynam getting the great on Geodude, which is bad. He threw a little bit early. Um, that catch cycle is generally really consistent. Um, but Dynam has been known to throw a little bit early on that. The, the thing that I wanted to bring up here that we don't get to talk about now, but I'm going to talk about anyways because I thought about it a lot, is Dynam has been thinking a lot about how to go fast through Moon. And one of the things that Dynamo's brought up to me is uh, double Pokeball for the Paris and um, Clefairy catches before the Geodude. Because you can save, like, if you switch to Great Ball on Geodude, you're not missing a good cycle, like that early punch you saw. Whereas on Clefairy and Paris, you want to rush those cycles to get the instant throw and get an excellent. So an ideal moon might actually throw the double Pokeballs at both those first two catches with an 80 and 90% chance to get in, and then switch to Geodude and save more Great Balls. Okay, we see Dynam getting the Zubat right into him. We saw Dynam pick up the Moonstone as well. So, at the beginning of the of the stream before we switched over to this. Um, the players had set their clocks to about 32 or 33 minutes on the hour before midnight. This is to uh, manipulate the time to roll over past midnight here, ideally. Um, items on the ground have a generally have a chance to respawn every 24 hours, um, being at midnight. So the idea is you get here at like 11.58, 11.59 p.m., pick up the Moonstone, get some catches and evolutions, and then you have the clock roll over to midnight, and there's a 50% chance or so that this Moonstone will respawn again and you get a quick catch later on in the run. Yeah, and, and more importantly, later on we'll use uh, the synchronized ability, where we, like, we can set... Uh, what nature the Pokemon we are catching is going to be. And that will also tick over at midnight. And in the early days, people did lose runs to not like time switching over to midnight and then. Yeah, just like losing the nature that you wanted. Okay, Triv has a glow two glowing fairies. So it's going to catch and one of those. Paris. And a glowing Paris? Yep. Nice. So this is going to be a good EXP situation for Triv. Diam is still only level 12 after two catches in Moon. Or three catches now with Zubat, Geodude, and Paris. No double Moonstone for Dynam. No double Moonstone for Dynam. I think Triv also didn't get double Moonstone. I think she got there around the time that it would have respawned and was checking again and it didn't show up. Yeah, in the top left corner of the of Headstrong stream, you can see her timer too. So, if you really want to like pay attention and mark down split times by yourself, you can compare the um, the split times as well. Um, like you know, any Nugget Bridge and stuff. Okay, it looks like Paris is good. And Dynam's still only level 12 on Pikachu. Is gonna need something to happen here. 
be it a glowing Clefairy before the lure runs out, or a chance to Clefable, Onyx, something to get this EXP up, because right now, that's not gonna cut it, unfortunately. Something purple. Yeah, and Triv also has a glowing um, Geodude. Yeah, she's really good for EXP. Yeah. Ooh, that's uh. Oh, there is a Chansey. There is a Chansey in that on screen. Now, will it get in? Okay, now that first ball. So, not being first ball in the Chansey is going to cost some EXP. But it does but get in on the second still, ball with an excellent. It should still be enough for... Yeah, a thousand EXP. Yeah. So that's more than enough to get to 15, which is good. Uh, Headstrong now in Forest. One of the version differences is in Pikachu version, you already have a Pikachu, which is, you know, maybe a bit obvious. Um, so you can't catch Pikachu in Forest for a dex entry. So Eevee gets the advantage of having that Pikachu in Forest. Uh, for the extra catch. So, like, we were talking about Pika having Mankey and Sandshrew before t Mount Moon. Uh, Eevee has Pikachu and Ekans before Mount Moon. Yeah, and the extra advantage um, where, where uh, she found it um, was before the Pidgey Trainer. Well, two breakouts are not really helping. Um, yeah. But Eevee, the Pidgey Trainer always takes two turns for Eevee, and the Pidgey has uh, sand attack and the bane of every speedrunner's existence is like sand attack and minimize and those types of moves so uh, you can two controller that's something we haven't really seen yet we'll see it in a bit in Mount Moon but uh, you can uh, cheat and two controller the Pidgey fights but she's not going for it yeah I don't but think if you get an early Pikachu it just like just like Pikachu does let's go Pikachu you can Thundershock and kill the Pidgey. Yeah, I don't think we've really seen anybody do that in the tournament so far. Uh, I did. You did? Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's so many races. Hey, thank you for watching all of mine. <laughs> I've watched all of them. It's just there's so many races and there's so many yeah, Eevee yeah. runs and I don't like Eevee. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't remember. I'm sorry. But headstrong not getting sand attacked or did get sand attacked and hit through which is good so no misses yeah and dynam finding uh the fairy another another small pink thing yeah so dynam's at 15 catches now triff's also at 15 catches headstrong is at two so a little catching up to do yeah different catch routes more backloaded yeah Exactly, you get it. And Denim and Triv are actually on the same trainer, like in the same move at this point. With the same amount of catches? Yeah, so they're pretty neck and neck at this point. Dynam having slightly better EXP because of that Chansey, but not a lot. Yeah, we also... So, AVs are coming into play here too. We saw Triv get that early five level 5 to level 6 attack AV. Um, if her AVs are just better, which it doesn't look like it is. They're, they got similar rolls in the headbutt. But if her AVs do end up being better, she could have a better Misty fight. Um... Let's see, Dynam's hitting level 16 now. 36 attack at 16, which I think is a range. Uh, let me pull up my notes. That looks... Yeah, that it's a 10 and 16 range, assuming he doesn't level up again. On Starmie. But that's no attack AV, right? Uh... One second. 
That is... One attack AB. At level 16. Whereas Triv is going to have at least two. So if Triv can hit 16, she'll have a guaranteed KO on that. Um, Starmie. Here we have uh, Jesse and James, the real stars of uh, this game. I always felt like they were a really good inclusion. Ooh. Yeah, I I really like them as like as characters in this game. Especially like they, they actually say the word twerk. Um it makes me feel, you know, like it's the nineties again. You know? Just a yeah. just a young kid watching the anime and stuff, playing Pokemon yeah, Yellow. Saturday morning. Okay, Triff has Work. thirty-nine attack at level 16 which means she has four attack APs one of them is an extra from the level 6 bonus there because there was two at level 6s yeah so she has three attack APs every 10 levels uh, this is very good that's a very good thing to have on a neutral attack Pikachu it's going to let you just do some funny stuff throughout the run it's not, like, game-breaking, but it's really nice to have that as an option. Like, being able to just do things that you might not be able to with lower attack. Uh, we could see uh, Drift picking up the PP up and Dynam skipping it. Yeah, that means yes. Triv is going to keep the fossil. Yeah. And Dynam's planning to sell a fossil, so Dynam is foregoing the safety of having that extra fossil to sell later on for an extra two catches. Whereas Triv is keeping that fossil for an extra two catches. So depending on catch routes, if if Triv gets less things to spawn, she can more confidently go without things and just say, you know what, I have the fossil, I can level it up and get two more catches. Whereas Dynam doesn't really have that luxury, so at the end of the run, there might be a point where Dynam is sort of forced into uncomfortable situations. You know, catching stuff like Magmar, or Ditto, or Tangela, or Venonat, um, if things don't spawn correctly. Yeah, it's like the six second uh, time that Triff loses here, but has the just the room, the opportunity to be able to like not wait as long on certain spawns, just keep going, and the fossils are not a fast spawn, but are like a, a pretty slow catch. And um, I just want to pull our attention over to Headstrong's screen real quick. She had to do at least two resets of Route 2 to get Bellsprout. Yeah. So, that's unfortunate. I don't think either of the Pikachu runners had to do a reset in Route 2 to get anything. So that's a few, like, 10 seconds that it, um, is being lost there compared to those two. And back on the... Okay, yeah, so she's at level 11, so the G... not the Giovanni, the Brock fight should be easy, right, with double kick? Yeah, the... there's like... once you hit level 10, the... until you hit level 13, the fight looks exactly the same. Oh. Which is really weird. That's like, unless you have like a plus attack nature and some attack AVs, uh, the, or you're level 13, the fight just looks always exactly the same. It's, uh, it's, it's weird, really weird. Like, the, the first double kick on the Geodude, like, always does half. That's just, I guess that's just how super effective moves work, though. Like, low power super effective moves do such weird things with damage calcs. Yeah. Okay, it looks like... Dynam has gotten the Starmie range, the 10 out of 16. And Triv has gotten the 16 out of 16 Starmie range. I like those ranges. Yeah, they're very good ranges. Top tier. And 
and here you can see on Headstrong's uh, screen you can see the fight. Will be two double kicks on this Geodude. And as you can see it will do like exactly half. And at level 10 it will do exactly the same thing. And then you get a crit on one of them and it loses time. Yep. And then on the Omix. You first get the Tail Whip and then two Double Kicks. And again, the Double Kicks will do basically exactly half. A bit more. Yeah, but I'm not enough this... to be able to have a tree. I'm watching this Eevee fight against Brock and I'm thinking like... Wouldn't it be great if you had a move that just healed your Eevee and knocked the Onyx on like one hit? Yeah. Soon, say it. Soon? Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna find an Onyx later, right? An Eevee. S something like that. Okay, cool. Like something like Ordish with Absorb. Okay, that sounds good. Maybe like. But then. Yeah. Maybe slightly maybe a better. Bell or something. Because Onyx isn't in this game. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Neither, neither, yeah, neither is. Well, yeah, it's uh, but yeah, something, something like uh, something like an absorb move, uh, but slightly better even. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so Dynam got poisoned on the rival fight at Nugget Bridge, so not healing yet. We're gonna see something funny. Dynam's gonna do, like, when you get poisoned on the rival fight, you generally want to heal both the poison and HP. Because you're already low enough HP that you want to heal it anyways. Yeah, like 15 HP. So you're just going to KO the Venonat here. And then go into your party. Switch Oddish to slot 1. And do the next two fights with Oddish. And heal your... No. Oh. Interesting. Maybe you're just waiting till after the Sensru. So you don't get poisoned again. Well, the idea is you switch Oddish to slot 1 and you just use Oddish for the Sand Shrew in Psyduck. But I guess Dino knows something we don't, which is maybe that the Oddish is slow. So if the Oddish is slow, that doesn't work. But might just be electing to heal poison in this battle. Yeah. And thinks the HP is enough on Pikachu to get through the rest of the bridge and rival. And Triv also going to controller Sandshrew fight here. Doesn't want to risk the headbutt for not flinching and then getting sand attacked. Headstrong buying uh, the Magikarp. The yeah, it's like fastest, we lost uh, before. Yeah, it's the fastest uh, catch in the game. And it's in only, cost, it is. only cost five hundred. Yeah, you have. To, but if you like, if you could, pay, if you could just buy months like that, would be really good for the speed run. Yeah, Might imagine the game corner. Yeah, you, you might pick up a few more money items, but... Oh, another thing that's interesting here is... As Strong's doing the, um... Deposit, Headbutt, and then Lure menu... Before the Bellsprout Trainer, whereas in the Pikachu Runners, you would have seen them do it after the... Sandshrew Trainer. Just, yeah, just and the like... re yeah, the reason is that for Pikachu, you have to swap the Ordish Pikachu anyway. And Eevee doesn't do swapping, it's just Eevee. Yeah, and Eevee just... It gets the one-hit KO on Bellsprout with Headbutt, right? It should. It's not guaranteed, but... Almost it's... every run, you do get it. It's probably much more likely than just using Tackle, I guess. Yeah.
Okay, we see both Dynam and Triv on the coughing trainer. The grunt at the end of Nugget Bridge. And Dynam is level 18, so he probably has a good range, if not a guaranteed KO on this coughing. Triv is 17, so has a range and doesn't get it. And ends up getting poisoned. So Dynam getting a good fight here. Uh, that chance the EXP mattering a lot to get to level 18 to make that a lot better range. Trivaria getting um, not as lucky and getting poisoned and we'll have to heal that poison before the next fight. As well as, you know, taking an extra turn. Yeah, and it's just uh, one part of us uh, liberating this city from Team Rocket. Team Rocket has this uh, city uh, like cornered, surrounded from all sides. In Mount Moon, there's uh, our Jesse and James, preventing people from uh, leaving that that way, even if if you even could. Up here, there's this rocket on Nugget Bridge, and there's uh, also another one uh, later on. Uh, you don't have to fight them, but they are there. So. Uh, we're just liberating the city here. Oh, Triv is just carrying the poison through and is just gonna clear antidote on the next lure menu. Yeah. Okay, cool. So talking about liberating things, uh Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh so basically this this next section that Dynam's going into right now. You get talked to by this dude who's like also a Pokemon. And the ideal thing to do here is after this little chat, he tells you to go over to the computer. You can just skip doing that and just leave. Yeah. And when you do that, you actually beat the game. So we're going to see if Dynam does that. Or at least like beat a category in the game. Yeah, it does not do that. So wants to play honest and, you know, finish the run and, you know, with good competitive spirit, I guess. And as a thanks, you get some uh, SS tickets from Bill. Yeah, so you actually do need them to, like, progress in the story. You know, get the cut bush that also lets the residents of Cerulean Town leave, because there's that one cut bush on the south side of town. Um, if you had that earlier, you could liberate them. But, you know, we're not there yet, unfortunately. Yep. The other thing that's interesting here is Dynam has put his AVs in the chat. And has three speed AVs, which is a thing we talked about earlier with, you know, Lax versus Relax. You can have speed AVs, which don't do anything for Pikachu. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Has zero attack AVs, so definitely needed the 48 on that uh, coughing to get the knockout. Or not 48, uh, level 18 to get that knockout on coughing. But it has a couple of special attack AVs, which will be relevant for later dressing and James fights. And just like the Pokemon that presents earlier today, Detective Pikachu. He's just here in this game. Yeah, you don't even have to like buy a new game for it just free included in this game yeah that's basically the whole plot of the game from what i've i've been told yeah you follow some clues and then solve the crime yeah i i see that happening here it is a bit linear though the game but i guess that's what you get when it's free okay dad yeah, i'm seeing I mean, a puppy Headstrong's making pretty good time through Mount Moon with 13 catches. Yeah, I was looking at the catches. Uh, no Clefairy. So we'll have to see how her EXP is. I think this is slightly short. Yeah, we'll need to I'm catch a sure. Zubat. Or a Clefairy. 
Ideally, you want the Clefairy here just because it doesn't spawn anywhere else. Whereas, like, Zubat you can get in Rock Tunnel, and it evolves in one level. So if you catch it here, you're generally locking yourself out of Zubat for the rest of the game and Golbat itself. And neither of those have spawned yet. Dynam picking up a Nugget and a Lure. Uh, Triv is going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be looking at Route 6. This is another big departure from Eevee. Uh, they're going to be wanting Growlithe on Route 6 because it helps with a couple fights in a few minutes. And then you also have the ability to evolve Growlithe into Arcanine, and that's a free catch. And you can ride Arcanine for a really fast ride Pokemon, which is a thing that Eevee can't do because it doesn't have Arcanine. And Ninetales is not a ride Pokemon, unfortunately. I mean, we can get Arcanine even, even earlier. Okay, Joker. <laughs> There's an Arcanine for Dynam, and an Arcanine for Triv. Okay, so they both got good puppies. I think Triv has not gotten the rare candy yet, so we'll have to get the Lapras candy later on, way further in the um, way further in the run. That that's an Arcanine in training, Phoenix Meliore. Okay. Uh, they both got it on the first ball. But Triv's is Wumbo. <laughs> yeah, look at the EXP. So you can see that Triv just got like triple the EXP compared to Dynams. Um, it's, it's, sizes in this game are funny, where the glowing means a Pokemon's XL or XS, extra large or extra small. Um, within those, there's an extra chance for the there's an extra chance for the Pokemon to be extra extra smaller extra extra large. Um, this basically means that you get triple the EXP. This is very impactful if the thing you catch is a Chansey, which already gives a lot of EXP. Uh, it's also just very impactful if stuff like Arc or not Arcanine, but Growlithe. You catch it, you get a bonus like an extra thousand EXP from it. I'm okay, cool. skipping uh, these two trainers. We'll see it on Triv in a, just a just a second. Um, but there's like just a bit of room between those two trainers where you can. Uh, they, it looks like they cover the entire field, like the entire pathway. But there's like just a bit of space there to be able to uh, get in between them. Triv running into another Growlithe. Uh, she wants. A Pidgey here for better Growlithe the XP, so it has a better range on some trainers in the next section. And if she gets, catches Pidgey here, it evolves into Pidgeotto in one level, and um, her Pikachu will level up to 21. Okay, it looks like we're having a little bit of freezing, but that's fine. So, level 21 on Pikachu means you get Thunderbolt, which is a move that we're going to use a lot in this run. But it also means, because we got it before SSN, um, you can do a one-controller rival fight on SSN. Especially with plus, plus defense, it's very fair to do it, and you save a few turns in doing that. So, her going back for that and getting an extra catch and the level 21 is probably worth it. She also passes the Route 6 skip. And also back in Headstrong's screen, she got a snake and level 15. Yeah, that's a uh, really clutch. So now she can enter Misty's gym. Um, she'll go get the moves. And then be onto Misty's gym. Yeah, in the same center where uh, the Pikachu got uh, Zippy Zap. Eevee gets three wonderful moves. Buzzy Buzz, Sisley Slides, and Bouncy Bubble. And um, first we learn uh, Bouncy Bubble, it's just the first. It's a water ty type move. It's uh, 
a special move. It's 90 power, and you heal half the damage that you deal. It's like Absorb, but then does more damage. And it's a Water-type move. But that would be really strong against Brock. Shame we didn't yeah. have that move back then. Yeah, it's a shame you don't get access to it until now. Yeah, very unbalanced. Um, next, we learn Susky Slide, a 90 power physical fire move, and it will always burn. And uh, we also, uh, in between, uh, we have Buzzy Buzz. Um, and that's a 90 power special electric move, and it will always paralyze. And we will see all of those being used with their effects. A lot of the route is based on those moves. Like there are some fights where you... Oh, I, if I burn the opposing Pokémon, it deals half damage back to me, so... Or physical damage back to me, so... I can survive an extra turn because of that. Or... In uh, this Misty Gym, uh, paralyzed uh, Starmie, so you outspeed it in the in the second turn. Yeah, and um, Burn also does like one eighth HP, I think, of damage each turn, right? One eighth or one sixteenth? I, I don't, don't remember, remember which gen that changed, but yeah, it gets a little chip damage, which can help on some stuff, I think. Yeah. Normally, you don't want the uh, the tick to lost more than like a turn but yeah it especially helps if you're um if you're in a fight that you shouldn't be and you don't have a good range on anything and it does look like triv is doing 2c for um the arrival here i actually don't know if it's reasonable do it with minus speed. Okay, and we see Headstrong did not get burned on Misty, which is always good. I think Headstrong has a lot of attack AVs. Yeah, she was. That correctly. She was likes to thrash about, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, but I think that's like five attack AVs. I I think I saw thirty nine, and normally you have thirty four here. Okay, so what does that mean for the run then? Um. I would say normally, like, you want a few attack AVs, but, like, a higher... I'd say a higher special attack is better than a high... Like, a very high attack, but... Um, it does help with some ranges. And you can just, like, use some moves more efficiently. Like, some less menuing. In some places. It's not a huge difference. Okay, so it looks like she has zero special attack AVs. Um, which means, as you have to learn like a Chansey to give her a lot of EXP, that would fix that issue. Yeah, but uh, again with that, like, um, even with like one special attack AV or even two special attack AVs, you still don't have good ranges in the fights where it really matters. Nah, uh, just, you really need a lot of... Just uh, like hit level 30 for J and J2 and hit level 33 for J and J3. Get Tower Chansey or something.
So we're on Route 9 for our Dynam. And soon enough, Triv. And this is like, it's a shame, like, Headstrong is in a bit of delay, but here you can really see the difference between the two games. Uh, Pikachu has to do these fights to controller, where Eevee just solos things. And you can see, like, getting quite a bit of time back again on just these fights. Yeah, and um, looking back... Hold on a second, I see Diamond Chat saying OMFG. Yeah, okay. Ooh. Lucky the burn. Yeah, this was <laughs> a, a low special attack Growlithe, but got lucky with the burn. Um, I was gonna say, okay, it looks like Triv is almost through Alicia here. Okay, getting back to what I was gonna say. Um, now that Headstrong is out of Mount Moon, we can sort of compare their paces at Mount Moon. Um, Triv had a 30 352 exit moon with 15 Pokemon. Uh, Venom had a 30 358 with 15, so both about. 3355. Uh, Headstrong had a 3306 with 13. So, adjusting for catches, they were both about like 45 seconds ahead at that point. But Headstrong is going to have a better bridge section because it's EV. So, I don't know how that really compares, but that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, it looks like they might have a slightly better pace around the time where Headstrong is. Yeah, I have. Uh, I noted down the times on uh, leaving uh, Bill's house with catches, so to be able to also see for the difference in the in the bridge timing. Yeah, and also um, both Triv and Dynamo have to like heal poison at some point uh, between Nugget Bridge and Cerulean, so there's that advantage too, where Headstrong's not going to have to do that. Uh, do you want to talk about Route Ten? Yes, Route 10. We all love it, we all hate it. It, uh, it makes and breaks runs. It's, uh, it's like a strange place where you can, together with Rock Tunnel, right after this, where you can... Like, th things can just feel fine, but suddenly you do lose, like, one and a half minutes on a PB run, compared to a PB run. Um, and you can see it here for Dynam now. You really need to spawn luck. There are some catches that are like sometimes you have a run and like the things that you need, three different things spawns and you're like, oh great, I can continue on. And other times you see three pharaohs and you're like, make this stop. Wait, did he? Did Dana not catch a Nidoran? Uh, nothing spawns, so he just reset via the rocket, I think. Okay. Probably will go back up. Triv getting a Nidoran male. Um, and this is really female. good. And a Spearow. Very good, very good, very good. Um, Nidoran Mail is like the partner and a Pokemon that you're going to be using for some battles coming up in the hideout section. So it's very good to get it first so it gets all the EXP from the catches on the routes. So it can like get to level 28 and helps with some other fights uh, with better ranges at level 28. Yeah, and also evolving the other two party Pokemon. Yeah, so very clean start to Route 10 so far for Driv. Uh, Headstrong uh, choosing to catch the Venonet. Yeah, and that's interesting because... You have to go out of your way to get it. So it does cost a bit of time to get, but it's an extra catch. At least on Pikachu, I don't like getting it. It moves a lot, and it's hard to, like, hit for me, but I don't know yeah. why EV runners seem to get it more. I think it's, um... Like, the, the, the extra catches are, like, a bit less useful, maybe. Like, you don't have, like, the 
the two early extra catches in the Sandshrew and the Mankey. You only have one, so you want to catch up a bit. Personally, I don't really go for it unless there's also like a Meowth there. Oh yeah, that is another difference, huh? Yeah, we have an extra thing that can spawn up there. And then you have two extra Pokemon there suddenly, then that's pretty good. Okay, Dynam does get the Nidoran male and female. Yeah, only in the reverse order of uh, EXP. And but I, you're still happy you have them. I don't see either of them marking double moves down that tracker, so I do think they both didn't get it. It does look like Headstrong got it, though, because she has Nido King and Weekly Tough Mark. Okay, so Headstrong is like 31 seconds behind Dynam and 16 seconds behind Treveria, leaving Bill with the same catch count. So they're uh, all still really close together. Dynam arriving in Rock Tunnel. An Onyx appears. Promptly ignored. I mean, whenever Onyx spawns, you're so glad that you can, like, if you can run around it. I mean, I'm because glad that I can so... ride on it. There's so many spots here where it's like, okay, I, I, I'm just going to encounter Onyx here, nothing I can do. It's very good at blocking the road. You can ride it, uh, I wouldn't advise it. There are a lot of Pokemon here you can catch. There's this Machop and uh, a Cubone that needs four levels to get. Mm -hmm. but they're pretty common. But the thing, the most important thing to find here is a Rhyhorn. Uh, Rhyhorn is the first real right Pokemon um, that actually makes you faster, run faster. You can get an Onyx in Mount Moon, and yes, you can ride Onyx, but it's not faster than walking. I do want to point out, though, um, Rhyhorn isn't that big of a miss for Pikachu, um, because Rhyhorn has Arcanine to ride, and you get a free Firestone leaving Lavender Town. Um, you can reasonably skip it and just get Arcanine early and use that to ride through the rest of the game until you get to Rapid Ash. So it's really yeah, punishing it's, for EV version because you don't yeah, have but it's, Arcanine. It's still like the, the best Pokemon to find, right? It is. I think in Pikachu, like the best Pokemon to find, especially in a race setting, is Graveler uh, just because EXP is the biggest thing. And maybe that's a controversial thing to say, but Graveler is so important for the catch route in like getting damage calcs and ranges later on. In my experience, that it's almost more important than Rhyhorn in races. Yeah, see, Etiquette agrees with me, and he's an Eevee runner. Outside of Rhyhorn. Well, Rhyhorn is a no point for Pikachu. So, etiquette agrees with me, that's all I'll say. Adam does get the Rhyhorn, though. Is gonna Raspberry it, make it 100% catch with an excellent. Well, I should say a 99.9 like, repeating 10 times. Uh, 
You might know of the Gen 1 catch where there's a 1 in 250, or Gen 1 miss where there's a 1 in 256 chance of a uh, move missing, even if it's 100% accurate. Um, there's a similar thing in this game where there's a like 1 in 60,000 chance of any catch failing, even if it would have succeeded. Just because there's a like, there's a less than or equal to versus less than operator in the code somewhere that just makes that a possibility. So, I, I don't know that we've seen it before, but it is possible for any catch to fail, even if it's theoretically 100%. That's Trung also guessing, getting the trainer skip. Did Trip just remove Spiro from her party? Uh, no. Nidor uh, Nidorina. Okay, I thought she removed Spiro for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's still in there. Oh no, she did. Hmm. And adding it back in. Yeah. Good catch. Okay, so we just see... We see Triv evolving to Nido King now. And we see Dynam just now evolving to Nido Reno. Uh, you can see how impactful that... The, um... Catching Nidoran first is. Because Triv gets to do it before the King of Clown Trainer. Whereas now Dynam has to do it after the Chaos Con Trainer. And doing it before the Chaos Con Trainer is big because you can like sort of menu there with lots of catches. And you can just combine those menus. Dynam getting blocked there by that goal bet. That's fun. Still makes it through though, not hitting the optional or the goal bet, so it's optimal. And not heading this optional. I don't know anyone who would ever hit this optional in Pikachu. Must have seen something. Okay, there's a Keybone. So it looks like Headstrong did only get Jigglypuff on Route 6, if I'm reading this correctly. Uh, yep. Okay. Which is good, that's a second Moonstone target, and can Moonstone, I think, before or after the, um, the rival fight here? Uh, after. Okay. I'm gonna do it before Alicia the menuing. Okay. And I think she had, like, her... EXP was probably fine. Um. And like the catches on that route are not that at not as important as they are for Pikachu. Yeah, on Pikachu it's it feels like uh the make or break point of the run a lot of the time. Because not getting Growlithe can really mess up the Route 9 fights. Getting outsped here by the Pidgeotto losing the Bell Sprout, that's always an annoying one. That does have interesting implications, because ideally she's gonna wanna like deposit Wigglytuff, right? Yep. And if Bellsprout is fainted, she can't use two controllers for catches, because the second player won't come out with a fainted mod in the second slot, um, if there's no other Pokemon in the party. So she might be forced to revive the Bellsprout, despite having a free heal coming up soon. Um, which I guess is also fine, because it gets all the Route 10 EXP. But yeah. it's just like an extra thing that she has to do now. Yeah, you, you, you do revive here. It's... Uh... It sucks, but...
Dying, I'm doing some dodging. So I'm looking at their Pikachu levels, and it looks like Triv is like a level up on Dynam right now. Yeah, that's a big puppy. Yeah. Which is pretty impactful for the rest of the like Pikachu section of the run. Yeah, we're getting to the point where the level really makes a big difference. It always does somewhat, but it's like even more important. Because we're getting to the section where we're actually under leveled. Um Ah uh, yeah, that's why Adam is missing Graveler. Ooh, that's strong. Hitting the one of the trainers on the trainer skip, you can see she was like almost perfectly in the middle, but not far enough. And yeah, you can just Hit the trainer. Luckily, it doesn't take too much. It's just one move, one uh, charm, and their bouncy bubble. This this side of the fight. Yeah, and the other side would just be a uh, sizzly slide. Yeah. The other side is way worse for Pikachu to hit. Trish making friends with an Onyx. Yeah, was trying to avoid that spinner. And the spinner turned away, and then the Onyx spawned right in front of her. Yeah, that's uh, that's this game. Sometimes that just happens. And Dynam is gonna be Gravelerless for the rest of the run. Uh, with no attack AVs, and only two, I think, special attack AVs, that is sort of not the best. Um, he can catch Eradicate on the next two routes, and that is basically the same amount of EXP as a Graveler. So, we might see that, and that could help save that EXP situation. But, there's a lot of fights here where being a level down is going to cost you an extra turn or two, um, and can cause you to get knocked out more easily. So, there's a lot of time safe here for Triv compared to Dynam. And also being uh, two catches ahead. Yeah. I think uh, Triv area, like, maybe just like took the lead by a tiny bit. There's still a lot uh, that can happen, but... And Triv also didn't get Cubone, notably, in Tunnel. So that means she can still get it in Tower um, after the hideout section. Which means it evolves faster because it's only one level as opposed to four and doesn't learn an extra move. Yeah, um, it's optimal. But it only has a 10% spawn rate in Tower, and there's very few spawns, as opposed to Tunnel, which it has a 9% spawn rate. But there's a lot more chances for it to spawn. And she's also still able to catch Raticate, so we might see that as well from her on the next route or two. I mean, you always go for the Raticate there, right? If, if you see it. I've definitely seen people skip it, um, but I think I would, especially in a race setting, because and race is like for Pikachu, especially in this portion. I don't know like how strict it is for Eevee. Like level thirty by J and J three is like the most important thing you can do because it gives you like the best ranges on J and J three to get a three turn fight. Yeah, it's a bit different for Eevee. Jesse and James three, the rangers almost always suck. So even getting a higher level mostly that you're more likely to like survive getting double targeted so you survive an extra turn that way but it's a really really hard range to hit yeah because on pika we um we basically always two shot the arbok on the sweet crit and then the wheezing can be a 
plus four Thunderbolt range um, if your special attack is high enough at level 30. And so hitting level 30 is very important. And even if it's not like a good range, you can just sort of like go for it in certain situations and not be punished. Yeah, here we see Headstrong, by the way, on the Route 9 fights, just doing these uh, one controller. Getting a nice free heal on the sand through, and then... I think she, like, level 19, she was just too low at level... I think from level 20 on, she could probably just use two headbots on the Redicate. Okay, clean skip there for her. Then we get to see her Route 10. There's a Radicate. And a Nutrient Mail. That's good so far. Yeah, and then you hope for like... like... She caught Route 2 Rat Ratata? Yep. Yeah. So Raticate's a fine catch here, and gives her good EXP, which is going to be very needed with zero special attack APs. Yeah, and then you hope for like one more... Uh, like one of the two, like three other spawns. Like either the Sparrow, the Nidoran female, or the Krabby. I think you leave with that. Okay, no Redicate for Dynam on this route. But there's a Redicate. Well, because of the Abra. Ooh, good. Using the two controller there to stun the Abra. Um, if you're not familiar with this game, Abra is a weird one where if you look at it, it teleports away and just like despawns. Um, but using the two controller, you can run into Pokemon and stun them. And you can just sort of like run into it and walk towards it with your first controller if you're using the two controller to stun it. Uh, what Dynam did there. So gets the good Abra catch and then We'll hold joystick right here uh, after this catch and get the eradicate that is right there. And it looks like Drift also getting... has an Abra. And Headstrong is getting a Krabby as well. Yeah, that's uh, a weird uh, catch. Uh, probably some Joy-Con. Uh... Yeah, the first ball coming out there. I'm, I've done that a lot. Just like the little, like you, you make the throw and you flick your wrist a little at the end and then it throws only one of them. It's very annoying. Now we see Trevario ahead by one catch. And by one catch and a, like, a few steps. They are not far apart, like, geographically right now. Yeah. They could high-five. Yeah. In that loading zone. Triv not getting the Raticate here. Uh, can still plan to catch in a mansion but it probably just becomes a bonus Pokemon at this point if things don't go quite the right way. And so, do you want to explain this? Yeah, here they're using uh, Synchronize. Uh, this game doesn't have the Pokemon abilities like the other games uh, after Generation 1. This is a remake after all, but even the remakes had abilities, but this game doesn't. Um, but there is an option to talk to that NPC and you can synchronize. You have to, like, you can basically set whatever nature the rest of the Pokemon you catch on this day, this uh, on the, the this clock day on the Switch, um, to have. 
and they're setting it all to modest. Um, what for, we'll see in a bit. We're not uh, going to be like edgy and spoil it already. I could spoil it though for the right price of five dollars to the tournament pot, you know. Someone post the match rain over in chat. Yeah. But yeah, let's see which this is the Radicate head uh rocket fight after rep ten that Headstrong's going into. Um double headbutt should be fine, right? Uh yeah. Like that first uh, Radicate is a bit of a more difficult uh, range, but this one is actually pretty free. Double depending on how many not catches. Great, but that's fine, right? Yeah. Okay, so Triv and Dynam are both on this fight with the Hypno, which has good implications for like levels being important. Um, if either of these Pokemon that she has out were level 28, um, they would have a much more favorable range to one during this fight. Yeah, and you can see Triv, actually both her Pokemon are going to evolve or like level up on this fight to 28. They both had identical fights <laughs> where they yep. didn't get the one shot turn one and then had the potion turn two. Then 59 special attack at level 28. Um, that should set up. Uh, that should set up her. Um, no, that's not going to be good. Plus four. Um, Pikachu, Thunderbolt range, then J and J3, unfortunately. But going into this fight, the Nidoking, Nidoking attack stat is very important, and if it's level 28 or not. So you can see Dynamo is having to set up an X attack because he doesn't know what attack stat this Nidoking has at level 27. Is gonna have to do two poison jabs, whereas Triv can do two poison jabs and a third if it's needed. Yeah, because she just saw the stats on the previous fights. Yeah, so it saves and it saves a like bag menu in the battle and an extra item, which can be useful later on. Okay, so I was talking with Trivaria about this fight a while ago when I was learning the game. And in the Pikachu notes, it's not obvious, but it just says, like, just um, X special attack and th Thunderbolt the Grimer if you're level 28. And I didn't realize that you could just do it with Pikachu in slot 2 for, like, a month and a half. And she also had said, like, yeah, I didn't know this thing. And I, was, I felt very validated that the Pikachu notes are confusing to read. Thanks, Dachi. Okay, Headstrong's evolving Data Queen, interestingly. Which doesn't matter for Eevee, right? I just wish no, everyone... just... Yeah. I mean, yes, there are Nido King strats, but they're not that, like, as important. And. Meanwhile, we see Trevaria doing some acrobatics. Some venting, if you will. I don't know what the chat is talking about right now. I'm guessing the Zubat catch? I hope so.
Okay, so now that Trev's done with the only platforming portion of the game, she will be going on to the next Jesse and James fight. After doing some, you know, more spinner pads. And picking up her candy. Uh, this fight, you will generally see her move Rhyhorn into slot 1 and use Nita King as a partner. Um, Rhyhorn just doesn't get KO'd as often as Pikachu will, and it's generally safer uh, just having like a rock and crown type out there that can hit super effective damage and has a high crit ratio move drill run. Yeah, and it's it fits in the story of uh, let's go Pikachu not using the Pikachu. Yeah, because Pikachu is so good, we just don't want it to get hurt, you know. Ah, it's our, that's it's our baby. The right horn. That's strong. And getting lots of really stuff important. there. Yeah. Looks like a pretty okay rock tunnel. As you will see for this Jesse and James fight and the next one, the first goal is to get rid of the Arbok. Yeah, it has glare. And it has less defense, so it's easier to KO. I think Weezing has like base 120 defense and Arbok has like base 69, so it's just so much easier to one hit KO with plus two attack. Yeah, and here you can see that Trips, Rayhorn being level up. Oh. Dynam also just missed that range. So That's having pretty one. much identical fights. Yeah. And there you could see Triff having some sta status lag. It's a nice uh, feature of this game. Let's call it that. Feature. Yeah. The, um... Where? Go ahead. Yeah, if if you have a status condition or any Pokemon has a status condition, and especially in double battles, there's like a I don't know exactly what it is, like a fifty percent chance or something, or like a thirty percent chance to just get some random delay. It just lags. It just waits. Does nothing. I think it's sort of like frame rules in Mario, where like. It happens on a cycle, and you have to hit it before the cycle ends. Um, but if you hit it at the start of a cycle, you're going to get lots of delay. I don't yeah, know if but you're, I do, I, you're familiar I do with feel that, like but... the del delay is always the same length, somewhat. Yeah, it... Like... I, I never like feel like I'm on, I'm, on a, I'm on a half delay cycle. I think it's just like a bus, though, you know? Think of a frame rule like a bus, and it's on a schedule, and it's going to leave at the same every 21 frames. Uh, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying as a reference to this really obscure video, but I'm going to stop now. I, I mean, you, you as an American, do you understand the concept of a bus and leaving on time? And... I, I understand the concept of a bus. I don't understand the concept of leaving on time generally, no. Yeah. Not, with, not with city transportation. University transportation is a different story. A city? Yeah. It's okay. I told Sheep that I would bring up America, so this is what I get. Um, yep. <laughs> Sandy's going to play the American today, so... <laughs> Public transport is an easy win for Europe. Yes, absolutely. So... Okay, Ooh, Triv is on the one fight from Mana Speed Matters. Um, this, okay, didn't matter. Go back, it's fine. And evolving Cadaver here, so now. 
Oh my gosh. Have you looked at the catch counts so far? Yeah. Yeah. Astrong has 33. <laughs> Astrong has yeah. the most catches at this point. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I didn't even notice yeah. that. Like. Yeah, that's when had a good uh, route 10 and tunnel. Yeah. And and the extra moonstone. Yeah, that helps a lot. I think got everything in tunnel. Got the gold bat evolved. Got the grav layer, the cubone, the chop, the rhyhorn. Uh, did I don't think we've seen any. We saw zero starters in this run of Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, unfortunately. But, yeah, Headstrong is a really good catch situation. And probably has dropped the lure at this point in Tunnel. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is a fight that I take pride in as a Pikachu runner. What we do is we set up Pikachu to plus six attack, then Zippy Zap the Persian so it doesn't hit us turn two. And then turn three, we double kick and helping hand the Rhyhorn to KO it. Most of the time. Assuming our EXP is good. What did you do in, in Eevee? Um, Eevee, this fight is mostly fine, but it can be sometimes dangerous. But I guess the same could be for... I mean, you only give it one turn, but... Uh, you start with a Sisby Slide on the Persian, so the slashes only do half damage. Uh, then you set up an X attack, or like you set up an X attack in the first turn because it's um, fake out, yeah. Uses fake out anyway, or it's likely to fake out anyway. And then you use a Sisley slide, and then you can just use like another Sisley slide to kill it. And that's normally fine unless you get like either a turn one slash instead of a fake out, or you get like a second crit, or your minus defense. Um, then the fight can be a bit more dangerous. Uh, it looks like Triv went, or not Triv, uh, Dynam went and picked up the Max Revive behind Geobody, which Trevaria did not. It's so just an extra safety item, I suppose. Yeah, but didn't, didn't you say Dynam was going for the PB threats? Yeah, Dynam got the X Defend in Pewter. So I'm a bit confused, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I don't like... think I don't think this is PB pace, so I guess I might be settling into more of a um like finish the run. Yeah, yeah. And also maybe like checked in to see like the difference uh, like comparing to Triv. Yeah, and at this point ha can have a good sense of like how how their time versus uh, Headstrong might be shaping up as well. Yeah. So we'll see Arcanine and Training come into the party here for Dynam and Trivaria. Uh, what we're going to be using it for is a sacrifice on the next J&J fight. Uh, it'll always be targeted turn 1, or should should always be targeted turn 1 uh, by Arbok on this next J&J fight. And, and doing so gives... Um, gives Pikachu the free turn to just Thunderbolt. And only take one hit and then you can get the second pokemon in and knock out arbok and make the fight safe i think it's a little bit slower than what eevee does but it's what we have so yeah for eevee you just use eevee yeah it's something we'll see somewhat soon uh after his rival fight, leaving tunnel or leaving tower, then the Clefairy fight. Um, because in the Pokemon Center where we use Synchronize, like talk to the uh, the channeler with the Abra. Um, on the that's on the left side of the Pokemon Center. On the right side of the Pokemon Center, there's also a, uh, an, another NPC, like another one of those tamers that you that teaches moves. Um, and actually has like a really really good move for Eevee there um yeah. it's a 90 power psychic uh, special type move and it sets up a light screen um it's 
like maybe one of the most busted moves ever. I mean, it is busted. It's also matched by the dark type move that has physical 90 base power that sets up reflect in that and you, but it's for some reason yeah. not taught by EV runners. Yeah, because there's like n not really any like use for it. But its name is so good. Yeah, Batty it's Bad Batty is great. Bad. Batty Bad. It's so good. Batty Bad is special? Why is Batty Bad special? That makes no sense thematically. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Etiquette. There, there's no way it's special. It has to be physical. Oh my goodness, my world right now is... Oh, okay. Yep, it's, it's special. Wow. Yeah. It just makes sense that it'd be physical. Like, I figured Umbreon's attack stat was higher, but I guess not. And I just reading that Betty Bat was nerfed in Gen 8 onwards. Yeah, I think all the moves were nerfed in Gen 8 and onwards, but are also not available. Yeah, you can't select it, but <laughs> in move power was changed to 80 and accuracy to 95%. Which I would say fair. But still. Interesting note on uh, the runs that we're actually watching. Um, Triv did get ghastly in tower and is looking for a keybone still if possible. Uh, it's not necessary at this point with her catch route, but if she got keybone, she could cut out tentacle really easily. Whereas Dynam is still looking for for ghastly and does not have tentacle planned, so could still take tentacle um, if ghastly doesn't show up. Well, there's a ghastly. Okay, it is going back for it. Alright, that brings Sam all the way up to 32 catches. Headstrong and Triv are at 33, but notably Headstrong is like 20 minutes behind. Uh, 18 minutes behind, so... High catch route for Headstrong. She'll be able to sort of just like... Oh, okay, Dynam had the key bone, sorry. <laughs> um, Headstrong will be able to just sort of like run through the rest of the game. I have nine tails for Headstrong. I don't think she'll catch that. But she'll opt to catch the Vulpix instead. Yeah, I don't think the catch rate is quite there for nine tails. That's unfortunate. That'd be fun. There's no Silver Rats at this point yet. A bit low on Ultra Balls now for Headstrong. I think she's down to four now after this catch. But she Yeah, but this has... is the first one. You only get five from the... the er, sorry, Great Balls. Oh, yeah. Not Ultras. I think I said Ultras, Great Balls. Um, yeah. Does have... Uh... Turns Double Edge here. That's really good. Four more two controller catches left, so that should be enough to get her through the game. Yeah, and I think you do get a few from some of the trainers. Yeah. You must from, like, one of the channelers. Not catching the Ninetales, avoiding that Pidgey. And Headstrong is off to the Pokemon Center to talk to an NPC that is not there in the Pikachu version. It's not? No, there's no moves here, as far as I know, in Pikachu. You don't get the uh, splishy splash here or uh, floaty fall. I believe those are both in fuchsia. Okay. 
Yeah, it's... We might get them if they were in this center. But, uh... uh floaty, floaty Fall is in uh, Celadon. So, hey. It is? Yeah. Splashy Splash is in Fuchsia. I just assumed they were both in Fuchsia. But yeah, uh, Triv and Dynam both having close calls with Jay and Jay. Uh, Triv getting Power of Love to expel poison with one HP left. Uh, so that was fun. I think Dynam also had something similar happen. But they're both out of there. Yeah, th these two, like, their, their they fights have been so similar. They're both at 34 catches now. Or Triv is at 34, Dynam's at 33, so she's one catch ahead um, with this Arcanine evolved. Um, so probably like 20 seconds ahead right now. Yeah, finally catching up to head Headstrong sketch count. Yeah. Dynam's still behind by a catch on Headstrong, though. But still has some distance. Gosh, this is so absurd. This is so many catches for Headstrong. Yeah. Okay, so now they're luring and going to sell it on. They're going to pick up some tea for their sore throats. Then they're going to go to Route 17 and finish up the last, like, catch roulette portion of the run. Yeah, don't, don't, don't like, hug the bottom here and forget to talk to Brock. Yes. You do need the tea. Um, yeah. It is possible to, like, run through it by hugging the fence. Yeah, you... Shame if that would happen to someone in the tournament. Right. Ooh, bonjour, Dynam. Dynam has a chancy, but I believe already has caught one. Yep. Capture taken. I would imagine that this is going to be in the collage later. The... Chansey on Route 16. Someone in chat, can you ask Dynam if there's a collage being planned? Thank you. Um, so we have a free catch here of Snorlax for both trainers coming up. Um, unfortunately, it's too strong, and all we have is Ghastly at this point. So we can't really fight it, and we just run. Yeah, I think this Snorlax has Lick. And that's yes. super effective against Ghastly. Thank you, Amber, for for quoting me. I really appreciate it. Um, Triv it be is accurate. going for the Doduo in Route 16. And uh, turning into another Doduo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is optimal, I guess. Um... The only yeah, thing, go ahead. The only thing that's notable this Doduo being on 16 versus 17 is you have to cut the bush, which is a few seconds. But also, Drill Peck is going to be in slot three instead of slot two. Um, that's important for a fight later on where you use it. Uh, that's the only difference between catching it and the next round on this one. But other than that, it's fine to catch it here. Headstrong is about to be venting in a few minutes, in a minute here. Um, chat, if I could get some chat interaction here for some more VIP slots, can I get you guys to post the follower emote from the Edgy channel, Edgy Slessia Mogus Venting, when Headstrong is getting into the vent? I would appreciate it, thank you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe either. Um, Dynam's just getting lots of evolutions here. Headstrong is getting through this fight. Trevaria is going through Route 17 now. Going to be looking for Ponyta. And Psyduck, I think, is the last thing for her. Also can get Raticate, I believe, on this route. Dynam getting Psyduck. Okay, Trevaria getting Ponyta and Doduo right next to it. Very good. Well, oh, wait, has Shiri Doduo. has Doduo. Catch Jane Doduo. 
Yes, technically. Weird throw, but that should get in. So one of the things that I that is different between Pikachu and Eevee here is Pikachu is not gonna candy this Dodo this um Ponyta immediately. Because we already have Arcanine, we're moving fast enough that we don't need to spend a candy on the Ponyta to evolve it. Whereas in Eevee, you're gonna want to candy that immediately to evolve it sooner. Yeah, the movement speeds between the Rhyhorn and the Rapidash is just too massive. Yeah, I think it's like where double or close to like 70% extra with Rapidash over Rhyhorn, whereas like Rapidash over Arcanine is like 4% different, which is not, it's like 2 or 4%. It's not meaningful in any way. Especially for the amount of time it takes to use a candy. And then you don't have to pick up another candy and it's just. It's good time save. And then Headstrong is going through to J and J2 now. I'm curious what strategy she's going to employ here. So there's a few different ones for Eevee, right? Yeah. Um, either you use Eevee with Glitzy Glow. You set up a special attack, Glitzy Glow the Arbok. But it's a range. Um, and these days, more people have started to also use uh, the Rhyhorn strats. Just uh, X attacking the Rhyhorn and uh, just using Drill Run. Depends a bit on your level and if you have a Rhyhorn, of course. But like at level 25, it's a pretty, I would say, pretty good range. And that's what we see here. Or at least yeah, that fight. It's very good at 25 on Arbok. But nope. That's probably like a... And so here it swaps to... Moving the fight to the Eevee side. Using a bouncy bell to heal a bit. And hopefully survive this wheezing here. Ooh. But poison, oh no. That was uh Oh no. Talked it out, but then got poisoned. Unfortunate. You hate to see it. Yeah, we'll have to use something like seismic toss or another X attack and drill run on this wheezing. Yeah, and hope the range is better. I think it should be a kill. Yeah, with plus four it should be good. I do think Headstrong should have sent out Vulpix because you don't need to evolve that. Yeah. You do get a, like a free heal a bit further on, but like missing a bit of EXP here. I'm guessing that she will want to pick up the Maxify after this too, because she will be expending um, yes. an extra revive here. And I also want to point out that... Um, Dynam and Trevaria are both on 39 catches and in the same fly menu, so they're only a few seconds apart right now, with Trevaria ahead by like two or three seconds. And they're both off to go catch their stars. You know, the star of the run, not like the yeah. star. We, uh, we learned to surf in the meantime while we were paying attention to Headstrom. They're both going for the tentacle. Yeah, I don't like this catch. I nope, avoid this catch I. as much as I can. Same. Both getting a great throw. And Trips is breaking out. There's Dynamo okay. Star. 1099. 
There are happy widows. Good catch. Yeah, so the, there's the, a CP value, a combat power value, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, some sort of calculation of all the stats combined. It's just the sum of all the stats times the level divided by 100 or something. Yeah. So, like, all the stats have arbitrary, equal weight. But... Yes, exactly. Um, um, it, it's arbitrary, but, like, it can tell you what your average IV is, basically, if it's a high average IV or not. But that doesn't mean that your special attack and speed are good. Yeah, but a 1099 is, like, very high. Yeah, I think the maximum the maximum value of CP for a star U is like eleven thirteen or something, eleven forty. Trevaria not finding a star U. Uh it's gonna need to repel. Yep, has the repel and lure still. Yeah, this, uh... She's on a tentacle chain, which is unfortunate. But that doesn't explain the two magic arms. You can see she's getting a bit uh, tilted there. Yeah, she's gonna have to repel again. This is, a uh, become a significant lead for Dynam now. Unfortunately. Dynam did end up using a candy on the ponyta. There's a star. Okay. That's not... 11.17. Ooh. Oh my goodness. That's a high one. Yeah. I don't Is know that if that's a... the highest we've seen so far, but... It's up there. <laughs> our, our, our statistician, Thomas Patrick, is in the chat. So... Oh, not, not the highest, but close. We'll see what Dynam Star looks like here in a second up as a star me. And another extra encounter. A 1070, also above average. That's okay, Amber. We have Dynam Star Me stats now. 119 special attack and 125 speed. So it's a good star. Yeah, you take those. Yeah. 8496. So that's. Like almost perfect speeds and above average special attack for Griff. Okay, good. Yeah, because that's the thing with these uh, these 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 combat power, these CP values. It just has an average of the stats, and all your first stats could be in HP and special defense and attack, and that's just not very useful to the run. I think, I think T Pat had a like 1080 the other day in his race or something, and it was like one special attack stat IV, but it had really good bulk. So like, it's it's meaningful in that it tells you that you have a much higher chance of having good stats and where you want them, but it's not a guarantee. And I think Dynam is. Done with catches. Um, erroneously has a Venomoth marked on that tracker for 51 catch, but I don't think it's going to go for it. So just needs to evolve Tentacool, Psyduck, and Grimer, and then get the two gift Pokemon later. T Pat, what was the um, highest CP value of any star you in the tournament so far? If you have that, uh, Jay Tettles at an eleven twenty-four. An eleven twenty-four. Okay.
it does look like uh, Headstrong lost some time. Yeah, With the, the death um, and everything. Those two deaths, like, yeah. A high catch count, but still. Um, so. I think she's like a minute behind Draven Dynam. gets the ghastly so she can start cutting out catches in the end of the game as well and she doesn't have tentacle marked so she's gonna have a very good like selection of whatever she wants at the end of the game yeah I do want to make clear like nothing's been decided yet in this uh in this race there's still a lot of things that could just take a lot of time yes there's uh, most annoying fights are still coming up there's a trifecta of fights in the end game that can make or break an entire run i've i've lost like seven straight like low 303 pace runs to just Koga and Archer in the past month, and it's very annoying. And it has the chance to, like, swing the whole race. Yeah, and, and we have seen it swing really close races. I do like the Ponyta walking behind Triff. I like how it gets stuck on things. Yeah. And it just sort of like is running in midair. Get your Edda quiz times uh, ready for Dynam. And I believe because of that star, you spawn taking forever. Um, Triv is Trivari is probably like at least a minute and a half, maybe two minutes behind now. But again, things happen in this game where Archer can take an extra five minutes because you get thunderbolted a bunch. Koga depletes all your psychic PP and then you sort of are left flailing. Anything can happen. This is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, I am curious. Uh, something that uh, the teapot was saying after his race and also something I noticed myself is that on average the people who are in the lead seem to be having the like better luck in those fights and like the, the, the th things are going okay for them or like a bit better than the people who are like trying to catch up I guess that's also a combination of people who are like slightly run trying to take a bit more risk yeah yeah I, I would imagine there's quite a few factors in filling into it as well as low sample size There is also um, a lurking Pokemon that we haven't talked about yet that can come into play for the Pikachu side, and which I think Dynam will use. 
uh, in the end of the game, and I think uh, if Dynam does use this Pokemon in the Elite Four, we'll assuming has uh, assuming Dynam has like a 30 second lead, will net a win entering the Elite Four if used. So just at this point, wants to make sure that they have like just enough of a lead over both these racers at Elite Four, and then can employ that strategy and show off a bit. And I'm very excited for that, if that happens. Yeah, the, the only problem with that is that it's very difficult to say if you have a 30 second lead over Headstrong by that point. Yeah, at that point you'd have to like, I believe, have Headstrong's Coca time and make a judgment based on that. Yeah, and you will have that time, but still. You'll, you'll be able to like make the consideration of, I have the Koga time, if everything goes perfect for Headstrong, what happens with Headstrong's time to finish out? And then base yeah. your decision off that. If Headstrong goes for so one controller fights instead of two controller fights, like, what is that time save? Yeah. But I mean, that all is like mental math that you don't really want to think about at that point. You still have to focus on your own race, your own run. That's fine. There's a there's um there's a cutscene after Victory Road. You have like a good minute of time there, twenty seconds or so to think, and then you can just stop thinking after that. So we're finally fighting the third gym leader. What's up with that? Why why do we do this? The fourth for Dynam. Well, like the third in like the story, you know? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. We're finally back in Vermilion. Yeah, we did eat uh, search to uh, use fly. Yeah, the we we skipped a bunch of stuff in explaining this race, but like We don't need search for fly. It's faster to do it later than, like, do a seven turn fight with Pikachu using Dig and, like, having to find an optional get Dig. Just just imagine using, uh, needing to beat Koga before you can use Surf. You would what need, would like, your route everything look to spawn. Like that? Yeah, but you, you don't have uh, a Starmie. No. I, you would need, I like, think that would push it into, like... Kadabra. Yeah, but like a late Kadabra, or are you going like Eevee version because Glitzy Glow? Yeah, that's true. But I don't even know if Eevee would have enough in the tank to do it, because it's like so high level. Yeah, they could have just in fishing it. for it, but... This is the only reason the... This is the reason the, the speedrun is good, okay? You have to catch 50 Pokemon, and you get to use Starmie. Okay, we see Headstrong entering Route 17, has a pony spawn almost immediately. With this pony, just needs one of Pidgey, Doduo, or Psyduck to finish out the route. So it just needs one of three things to spawn. You can also take a Pidgeotto here. Um, Dynam is showing this gym attendant a cute Pokemon. Trevari is beating Surge. Headstrong is candying Pony because it's a faster ride Pokemon. So I have a question for you, Sheep. Yeah. What's your, what's the cutest Gen 1 Pokemon? Uh, the cutest Gen 1 Pokemon. Yeah. The previous time when someone asked me that in commentary, I said Alolan Muck. That's a Gen 7 Pokemon. I... No, it's a Gen 1 Pokemon. It's in this game. No, it's Gen 7. This it's is a Gen, Gen 7 1. game. It's in this it's, game. It's, it's Gen 7. 
Um, Melmetal. That's very That's cute. cute. But also Gen 7. You keep on giving me these Gen 7 answers. Um, How about Grimer? Grimer has this charm. Okay. He's very happy in Gen 1, his sprites. Do you know what my I favorite Gen 1 sprites. Pokemon is? The cutest one? It's Pikachu, because Pikachu is the best. It's just the best. Mm. Yeah. Better than Eevee, even. Uh, that's, a, that's a statement. Uh, it's a statement I, that I, is I, true, I, and if I, you I, disagree I've... with that statement, go donate to the Match Arena right now. I, I would like to state that uh, this is... Uh... Sandy's uh, personal opinion and not the opinion of Pokemon Speedruns TV and the rest of the tournaments. I am not being paid. The only way you can pay me is by donating to the Match Reno and then the winner gets paid and they pay me. I just want to I, uh, that. Yeah, I, I, I already paid for the Match Reno at some point to try to get someone to do uh, some nice mount skips in a race, but... I... Okay, I want to clear the air on this on air. <laughs> I had the controller in my hand and it didn't connect to my switch and I just had to go. I am sorry. Yeah. However, I will do a cool thing later this year. Um, I'll do a cool speed run with them. Don't worry. There's going to be a really funny thing I'm going to put out. Oh, I, I can't wait. Yeah. And I, I, and, and I mean, you, you did show afterwards, like you posted a clip and it looked really cool. Yeah. It's the the speeder I'm thinking of is gonna be so much cooler, but I didn't I need someone to help me with it. But regardless, stuff is just Evos are happening. Yeah. There's not much going on right now. Dynam is now going to Silphco. No one caught Squirrel yet? That's astounding. I know Dynam saw one that he could have caught, but didn't. Because didn't know the cycle. Yeah, and I saw like two spawned up there while commentating with Triff. Yeah, like spawns, you know, like as you're walking on the down, way back. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Dynam's going to be doing the blue fight. I think we'll be using Dodrio to knock out the Executor, um, which is the only Pokemon that Starmie can't hit for at least neutral damage with all of its moves and the speed run. Uh, luckily, Dodrio exists and is on Route 17 and 16 and has Drill Peck, and plus two Drill Peck just Elko's. Executor. Nope, it's using Rapid Ash. So we'll Fire Blast it. Yeah, a bit surprising uh, Dynam didn't get your Magmar. But... Yeah, Magmar is safer than Rapid Ash. But that's fine, I guess. Um. I'm just going for Scald, and then max special attack, okay. So that's fine. Good blue, there's nothing weird that happened there. And... 122 special attack, 128 speed for Dynam at level 47. Yeah, and nothing like... Dynam, Dynam also impactful. didn't go for the... for the etiquette strat of uh, trying to skip turnarounds. A no. bit later on. If the right strat is done in E4, it will skip like two, three turnarounds. So that's not the worst by doing what it, what he's doing. But Dynam is now coming up to Archer, which is a multi-battle fight where you and Trace fight Archer and some Crunts. 
and or admin or somebody i don't know it's just the archer fight to be honest yeah a grunt um and trace has a cubone a star pokemon yep the cubone that was in the cutscenes earlier in pokemon tower trace yep. took it and is taking care of it I, I just feel like people don't connect that dot a lot when they're doing the speedrun because we're not actually paying attention to the story. But it's yeah. cute. It's very cute that he's taking care yeah, of his Kibo now. And he's taking care of it by bringing it out in a fight with these people. Yeah. Uh, gets a fine turn one. Um, the worst turn one would be Electro Thunderbolting the Starmie. And then you get stuck in a heal loop while Starmie keeps on Thunderbolting. And luckily that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, for, for, for people who were not very aware, this fight, you can, we've seen a three turn, a few three turn fights in this tournament, and we've seen like 12 turn fights in this tournament. Yeah, I think my first round I had like an eight or nine turn fight in this fight. Um, just getting Thunderbolted constantly. Yeah, my, mine was also terrible. And we see Headstrong getting a 1081 star as well. Oh, wow. So all very good stars in this round. We'll have to see how the stats shake out for them in a few minutes. It looks like Dynam is on track for a five turn fight with the seal. The uh, cube incorporates. Yes. Yeah. And it does. Yeah, five turn fights like average. Yeah, a little below average, I guess, but it's whatever. It's yeah, good like, enough. Like a, a three turn is like very good. The fourth turn is like, I'm very happy with this. And with five turns, you're like, this could have gone way worse. Yeah, and what the racers are... I'm sorry, I'm cutting myself off as, as Triv is starting up this fight as well. Um, also getting the same turn one of Mock Protect and Electrode Boom. Um, what the other racers are going to be looking for is Dynam to get these bad fights to get time back. And a five turn fight is not catastrophic. 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 I don't know how to say that word. I'm sorry. Um, catastrophic, I think. Okay. Uh, so it's going. Dynam is going to be maintaining that lead, basically. And it's likely to end up with a five turn fight here for Trevaria. So. There's not going to be really any time gain back. And that's sort of like one of the few places left for that to happen. Yeah, uh, Sandy earlier talked about like the, 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 the three fights, the triangle of fights. This is the first one, this uh, Archer 2 fight. Um, so we are still getting two more that can like just be really stupid fights like out of nowhere and then the star looks good albeit slow high special attack low speed yeah well to see how it looks after the water stone uh, but yeah, uh, yeah archer's one of those too. fights um, sabrina if you have really low special attack and it goes poorly can really throw you for a loop um but then the fight immediately following sabrina kaden the gym breaker and coca's gym uh has minimize and protect and toxic on its first mon so it kaden can just stall you out of all your psychic pp on that fight and that's not fun and it can just absolutely kill a run i i had a sabrina fight uh with a good star but it managed to Special defense dropped me three times. <laughs> so even with a good star, that sometimes can just like go wrong. Let's 
see, I'm gonna go back and look at Headstrong star stats. Uh, as a star me. I didn't catch him the first time. Yeah, Headstrong did go to uh, 46. Mm -hmm. As did Dino, where Dreveria could like evolve at level 45. Um, and that's mostly one... looking at like both speed and the special attack. 122 special attack and 115 speed. So we'll underspeed the Rapidash, I think. Or the Ninetales. I forget which one is the faster one. Um, the Rapidash is the faster one. Okay, yeah. It so has we'll one, one, 117 Rapidash. speed. And so, the Ninetales has 113. Headstrong can get like burned in Blaine's Gym and then it becomes annoying, but not run ending. It just loses time. Um, Running into quite a few Pokemon in Mansion, unfortunately. Yeah, this really is the last place where this can happen. Yeah. After this, anytime you're in a place of Pokemon, you're max repelling. Amber Route 7 is a place that you can get ambushed by Growlithe because you play Pikachu and Growlithe runs really fast. That is a true fact. So it looks like Headstrong is going into Blaine with 46. Let's see, what were the times of the other racers at Blaine at the fade out? So Dynam had a 20316 with 46 at the Feta on Blaine. Um, and then Triv had a 20428 at 44 catches. So I'm gonna copy those over to a notepad. And get a general sense of where Headstrong is at in relation to the other racers at this point. Dynam grabbing Lapras, one of the two gift Pokemon in this section. It's not shining, unfortunately. Um, the other gift Pokemon will be a Porygon here in a second. Uh, just two quick catches that finish off the 50 that you need to finish the run and get and beat Koga. And Dynam still has Venomoth marked as a planned catch. Um, I'm not sure what's up with that. I don't know why you would catch Venomoth in this run. So... I think uh, it was said earlier that uh, Dino marked Venomoth to uh, show that um, he is planning on making a collage of this. Interesting. Rim. So now we'll see Headstrong fight this Rapidash. And it will underspeed the Rapidash. We'll probably see a Flare Blitz. Just hope for not a crit. No crit, no burn. All good. All gourd. Dynam bought over 100. X special text, and we're going to use all of them. Yes. Okay, Headstrong has a 205 11 Blaine with 46 before this evolution. Um, that is 
about a minute 55 behind Dynam. And um, about 30 seconds ahead of Trevaria at this point in the run. I don't know what that means because things are variable, but yeah, and, there we go. And with catches? Yeah, with catches uh, taken into account. Yeah. Because Triv was only at 44, but a 204.28, so that 46, it would be like a 205.28. So there's about a minute and a half between Dynam and Headstrong, and about less than 30 seconds between Headstrong and Trevaria at this point. Yeah. And for Trevaria, it mostly was just that awful star you. Yeah, catch. need to repel twice, running into an extra tentacruel, that stuff. Very unfortunate. We will see Dinah going to Sabrina now. So this fight could also go like a few different ways. Reflect turn one. It really depends on what this Mr. Mime does mostly. Light screen turn two, the bad fight. Yeah. Uh, if you get light screen turn one, that's the average fight that you will expect. If you don't get light screen turn one, you really don't want light screen at all because getting light screen turn two means you have to spend an extra turn healing to uh, stall out the light screen. So you want to hit KO Alakazam. Which Dynam has done fine. Yeah, and that really is how this these fights are like uh, routed out. With okay, the light screen runs out at this turn, so when this Elikazam comes out, the light screen is gone, and uh, we can kill it. Otherwise, we won't be able to. And Dynam also remember to teach Thunderbolt. Yep, and use Thunderbolt on Slowbro. It is something that you can forget. And you won't really notice it until you get to this fight. And then you see Slowbro and you're like, I have water moves, I have psychic moves. That doesn't really help here. And then you scald the Slowbro and then it yawns you. Yep. And then you fall asleep on the Jinx, and you have to heal the sleep on the Jinx, and then it hits you again. Then you KO the Jinx, and you waste a few turns. I've definitely never done that on a PB pace run with a Shiny Lacris. No. Why would never. you? Sounds like a bad plan. It is a very bad plan. I don't know why anyone would do it. Headstrong uh, is finishing up Surge, but doesn't have Dodrio yet. I think she should get it before blue, um, which is fine. It's teaching Thunderbolt. Yeah, I'm not sure where she called it. If you catch it last and like nothing in Mansion, then it doesn't get enough EXP. She did catch a coughing in Mansion. Yeah, so that I think that should be enough. Yeah, I think it should be fine. Should have off on the next gym fight. That and otherwise, like you have to the rapid dash backup. Yeah, unfortunately, no, um, no magmar for any of the racers this run. Or fortunately not the easiest sketch. It's like an 80% catch with an excellent silver ras. It's fine. I don't think I've ever had a Magmar breakout and I've caught it like five times. It's whatever. Okay, Dynam does have 50 Pokemon and is able to enter Coca's gym. Catches are done. 
there will not be another wild Pokemon screen for Dynam for the rest of the game. I think. Shafaria is done with Sabrina. Did make up a little bit of time on Dynam with, without getting the, you know the light screen turn two. And here we have for Dynam, like the second fight in the. Oh, minimize turn one. Epic. And Muck protects and turn two to stall PP. And hits. Luckily, through. you hit. This is how this fight can go wrong. Yeah, I. I. Uh, had a shiny Lapras run. Died a Caden because it used Toxic turn one. I healed the poison. Then it minimized. Then I clicked Psychic and it protected. Then I clicked Psychic again. Then it clicked Minimize again and Toxic. And then. The, that cycle would, until I run a psychic PP. It was fun. It can go very bad, and it, unfor and it fortunately did not go bad for Dynam there. I was able to hit through the minimize and knock out that muck regardless. Yeah, only one boss turn basically to that muck. Yeah. Again, it's not likely for that fight to go really wrong, but. It, can. it has happened. Yeah. And where things can go wrong, that's the point where if you're behind, you're hoping they do. For your opponent, not for yourself. Yeah, it's like room to catch up. Because at this point, there's no more catches. So the only thing that like you can save time on is movement, which most people are going to be about equal in. Um, turn one explosion from Dynam. Very good. Assuming it doesn't KO, it does not KO. So, the rich get richer, etc. Optimal fight. Yep, no protect so far. Dynam just posting a lot of question marks in chat. No protect so far in Koga. Is this the rare four turn Koga? Are we seeing it live on Pokemon Speedruns TV? Nope, oh, it's still a five turn fight. Trying Mach to go for the double this. protect. But it fails, because it. in this generation it's only 30% chance to work. Good, good Koga fight overall though. I, I did have one uh, run. That was like a lost PB pace because I got like two double protects in Coco's gym. Oh my goodness. PVGC you. Yeah, Caden and Koga should go to Worlds. Yeah, they should. Speaking of which, Pokemon Worlds is this weekend. And you can watch it on twitch.tv slash Pokemon. If you're interested, it's at like 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, starting on like Thursday. Um or Eastern Daylight Time. I'm sorry, T-Pat. Um, regardless of that, though, Headstrong did see another Ninetales on Route 7, so that's two Ninetales for Headstrong, which is a very good Puck Omen. And Triv is starting Koga. Dynam is heading to Giovanni, and will be on the way for a few minutes. Let's see if uh, Triff and... Uh, nope. For the first time, like, they have a different fight. It feels like this run. They were so, like, exactly the same in what their fights were, but... Yeah, now it's departing because there's no turn one explosion. Yeah, no. Venomot uses Protect. See if Golbet uses Protect, Oster Scurs, no. Yeah. 
Okay, that was it was a pretty good Goga fight for Drift, but yeah, it looks like Headstrong didn't miss Fire Blast and got through Blue just fine. Luckily, as Pokemon Coliseum runners would know, Fire Blast is an 85% accurate move and it always hits when you need it to, so it's not a big deal hitting it here. See the joke there, Sheep, is it doesn't hit in Coliseum all the time, but it's a very bad move. We just hope it hits here. That's the joke. I'm hoping that came across well. Uh, with its explanation, yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, Headstrong starting Archer. One of the places where she can pick up some time, because I think both of the other runners got a five-turn fight. So if she got a three-turn here, that could give her an extra like 20-30 seconds back compared to them. So we'll just have to see how this turn one goes. Yeah, and Triv and Dynam are not like doing that much interesting stuff. It's interesting to see if Dynam is... I mean, Dynam will go for it. two controllers, not this fight, but the fight afterwards. Yeah, the only real Being interesting the here is Samuel. And Triv is just following him right now. More interesting to see if Triv is going for the one controller. Trying to catch up. And Headstrong got the Focus Energy turn 1 with Muck Protect, which is really good if Muck protects. So Keybone should always attack now. But this can't be a 3 turn, it's at best a 4 turn. And Weezing Protects. So that means I think it's pretty much guaranteed to be a 4 turn. Assuming Keybone doesn't miss a Bone Meringue. Which is still like 12 seconds saved compared to the other runners, which is not insignificant. And Dynam is going for two controller on Samuel. I think should be able to do uh, Psychic plus Stomp, so we'll save an X item here as well. Which, doing so, Psychic plus Stomp here would save turnarounds on Bruno. No, nope, I'm gonna be doing. An X special attack. And it looks head, and headstrong at the four turn. Yeah, it looks like it. I think stream is having an issue. Yeah, I think it's, the, but I'm not sure if they can hear us. No, I don't think so. I think Twitch is frozen at the moment. But but, uh, they will eventually get us back, but... RTMP is also... Yeah. Twitch is still up, or at least, like, it's not just on Twitch's side. Yeah, it must be on, like, Jordan's side. <laughs> Dino. Dino's, yeah, splicing. <laughs> he DDoSed, uh... Jordan here. 
No, we're not. If stream comes back all of a sudden and they hear us accusing Dynam of cheating, I'm not going to have that. Dynam is an upstanding citizen of this community. I would not splice, especially when ahead this far. Not the Dynam I know. Come back suddenly headstrong in the E4. <laughs> she just loaded her, like, her PP run or something. Okay, it looks like this stream is just fully offline now. Yep. Okay, I got feedback. Refresh your RTMP. Yeah. So Dynam's done with um, Giovanni now. Is leaving the yeah. gym. I like how the like little Eevee and Pikachu are still going just rhythmically, but like the streams are just sort of like buffering. Yep. They're still jamming to uh, Surf v version 2. Ah, oh, it looks like we're back. Okay, cool, we are back. We were talking about how like some of the streams seem to be buffering at points still, but. The Eevee and the Pikachu above the timer are just happily dancing along. Just moving. Okay, Dynam's getting through Rival here. Triv has just finished Geo. Strong is just getting Lapras. It looks like Dynam did a really late Ether too. Or not Ether, Elixir. Um, so it just has a lot of Psychics left. And now this is the point where Dynam is going to be looking at Headstrong's pace and trying to figure out um, how far ahead he is. Because at this point, yeah, this the... is like sort of where you have to start making decisions on what you want to do in the end of the run. Um, yeah, yeah, with these like buffering issues, that doesn't really help it. No. But having a good idea of like Sabrina time um, is going to be very helpful because like after Sabrina you can sort of just assume perfect Koga and everything from there and just get an idea of how far ahead you might be of that. Yeah, you mean like a Koga gym where you only see like toxic miss and explosion as moves that are being used? Fun fact, toxic can't miss in that gym. Starting Ooh. in gen six, I think, 
Toxic, when used by a poison type, has sure hit accuracy, or can hit a Pokemon even underground. I put I showed this off in my previous race in round four, where I toxic a sand slash that was under dig. Just fun little fact. Yeah, yeah, those weird quirks. Yeah, it's like those weird things where it's like you would expect Thunder Wave to be the same thing for electric types, but they nerfed Thunder Wave to be 90% accurate and didn't give it that because of Thunderous. Just weird Pokemon logic. Dynam's also and doing like... 2C here on um, Naomi. Yeah, sadly we couldn't see if like Drift went for one controller fights. She went two controller on the uh, Giovanni. Yeah, I. And I don't think I was able to see her HP in the rival fight so far. But Dynam did hit turn one that Hydro Pump and KO the King is gone. Yeah, so another point where, like, Thrift might, like, get a, gain a gain a turn or something. Yeah, I would have to like do a one controller fight in that instance. Yeah, the old, uh, like, you can win 8 seconds or you can lose 2 hours and 45 minutes. That's a charming freeze frame for Trivaria. Yeah, it's Pikachu, of course it's charming. Look at it, it's so cute. I mean, it, it just looked like a butt Pokemon to me. It's Pikachu. It's so cute. Chat, post your favorite Pikachu emo in the chat. My favorite is Let's Fucking Go. This is my favorite. It's just like the proper fatness of uh, Pikachu as it had in Gen 1. Okay, it looks like we might have to reset stream in a second here. We'll let you know if that happens. Um, maybe not. We'll let you know. Um, if stream goes down again, don't worry. Yep. Tech is on it. Actually, I said don't worry. If you're worried, you're this world record holder. We're all going to panic. You gotta hold us together here, man. Come on. Don't panic. Chat, don't panic. Just fine. Keep going. Don't panic. Oh, Dynam is getting the fresh water. This means... Okay, I can talk about this now. Yep. So, in Silvco, we rescued a... Um... We rescued a Lapras from Silphco. This Lapras is level 34, it has set IVs, 31 HP, 25 attack and defense, 25 speed, and 30 special attack and special defense. What this means is you can bring Lapras into the Elite Four, do two controller Agatha and skip the full restore, do two controller Lance and summon before the battle. Oh no. This is a big swing. Did yes, you see that? I did. Oh no. This is one of the trainer skips that is like it's not it's not the hardest one, but it is an annoying one. It's yeah. like very finicky. This costs about a minute overall. So this has just gotten really close. Do you still think we see that strat? I think we do. Um, I think, especially since Dynam has like five more minutes to chat to decide, um, whether or not he's skipping the floor store, um, it's about equivalent to a 1C perfect Elite Four or like five to ten seconds slower. Mm -hmm. I think, especially if he sees that Headstrong's Coca goes poorly, he'll go for it. Yeah, it can also skip healing again, because if you 2C strat, you 
don't need those extra psychics. You can just plus four skull three of the Pokemon. Yeah, and after like hitting Alexa there, uh, Dynam took the Colby skip very safely. That does mean um, he'll have to. Dynam will have to um, Aether either last turn of Agatha or in Lance. So we'll have to Thunderbolt Zedra in that case. Uh, missing a Hydro Pump. Gonna heal here to be in good range for Dawson. Yeah, this is the the, the third trainer for uh, Dynamite Trivari to start it in that uh, in that threesome of of annoying battles. Uh, yeah, Caroline and, really and I would and I would actually say that uh, maybe Caroline decided the most races this tournament. Uh, Caroline put Trivaria's start asleep. No freeze. Just needs a hydro pump. It's the hydro pump KO'd. Okay. Now it's only two Pokemon behind uh, Dynam at this point. Okay, now they're just going to be pushing boulders for a minute here. Um, let's see, how's Headstrong doing? Not a lot of protects, it seems like. So about a 232.40 Koga uh, for Headstrong. And does late teeth, it looks like. Okay, so... Dynam is through Dawson. I assume Scald the Lickitung. Yeah. So Psychic PP is fine. Yeah, this looks to be like what? Like a 40 second difference? Yeah, 30 to 40. Um, also, Trevaria will have two candy again. Because she did one less candy, I think. Or. No, okay, she's not in the right candy level. Uh, she just... there. I was thinking of something else. Yeah, Dynam got this earlier in the Alexa. Yeah. Okay, it looks like Dynam just skipped full restore, so it's committing to two controller lapper strats. Actually, the Starmies are all good. Headstrong's is the only one that's, like, wanting anything, and it wants speed. It's, like, min speed. So, I think she was 115 at 46. So, not fast, but maybe two or three speed IV. Um, yeah, she could borrow some from Triff, where it's, like, a 29 speed. Yeah, I think both Dynam and Triv have high speed, and Triv might get close to 155 in Agatha. Yeah, it looks like Triv is about 43 seconds behind right now, according to Phoenix. And then we see a Lapras. Basically, the idea of Lapras is it allows you to skip risky Agatha, Lance, and... Uh, Champ, on Lance and Champ, there's a 1 in 48 chance that you get crit on your Starmie turn 1. And that is the only chance you have on both of those fights for anything to go wrong. Um, Lapras won't faint to a crit from either Pokemon. 
unfortunately, or it might faint to a crit from Pidgeot on Champ. But the idea is you take damage on Lance with Lapras, and then you survive a Air Slash on Champion, and then a Quick Attack KOs Lapras. I won't have enough friendship to do Power of Love, and that lets you go through the rest of Champion with only one Pokemon out. It also has Ice Shard, so for a low special attack Starmies, you get the range on Lance's Dragonite much more easily, even at plus four. So basically, you get just a way safer end of game, and it costs you like five to ten seconds at most, which with a lead of 40 seconds, I think Dino feels very comfortable with like taking in. And Something catastrophic needs to happen here for that lead to change. Yeah, but that is uh, the lead on Trevaria. And Headstrong was like 30 Head seconds ahead of Trevaria. Yeah, so there is definitely. There is that here. 10 seconds there. That's It can get really close till the end. Yeah. Let's see, let's take a look at our exit picture road times. Headstrong will be looking to get a 251-something exit victory road to be on pace uh, to beat Dynam, basically. Well, here's one. Went for one controller. And hit a Hydro Pump on Samuel. Okay, that's good. That's like 8 seconds by itself. Yeah, Dynam is getting Bruno turnarounds as well, so that's another 10 seconds in Headstrong's favor, assuming Headstrong uh, doesn't get those. And that one controller on Samuel uh, basically guarantees. Um, Dynam's Bruno turnarounds happen because Dynam used an X special attack on Samuel, uh, X defend on Giovanni, and X special attack on um, Blue. And uh, used the Candy 246. Yeah. So, like, uh, in blue, Samuel and Giovanni, if you use one of those X items, you're going to get Bruno Turnarounds. The X Defend or those two X Special Attacks. If you use all three, you get Bruno Turnarounds, unfortunately. It's just that close. Okay, and... Here we see the... For Dynam, the first part of the two controller strats. Yep. The, um... Oh no. Oh no. What is she going to do? Faint? The no faint? Are you... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. She... This move doesn't exist. I swear. <laughs> that, that was like the she only place She could have won something there. Yeah, there's $20 on the line if you get hit by faint on Hitmonlee. Um, it does like 15 to 23 damage depending on your defense stat. Um, she was fine going into the battle. Uh, Polyrath hitting... Starmie knocked it down to like 5 HP, and Hitmonlee could have knocked out the Starmie with Faint. I'd been fine. Um, Driv would have gotten $20, the run would have ended though. Um, but it didn't use Faint. That was like the best situation for Faint we've seen so far aside from the first race. And it's not happened. There's only one race after this, there's only four more runs to Bruno that we can see it happen. 24006 Geo for strong interesting i think that's 
that's closed with Dynam. Yeah, we, we can't really tell till like the victory road exit. Yeah. Okay, so Diamus through who? Agatha. Okay, you could see the difference between Dynam 2 controller and Trevaria 1 controller Agatha. Yeah. The, the difference, though, is um, between battles, Trevaria is going to have to menu to heal this star you, this Starmie, whereas Dynam is not going to have to. His Starmie and Lapras are going to be at full health throughout the rest of this run, um, except for if they get damaged here, and he'll heal in battle. So the extra menu is going to be the time difference between the strategies, basically. Uh, two controllers menuing in battle, whereas um, one controller is not able to do that, because it's too risky. Yeah, and it's the two controller also just adds consistency, because yes. despite in one controller, there's like the notes of like, okay, you turn one you X special attack and then four different things can happen and you just have to like adjust to what happens okay so i popped off there because lapras got hit um basically the optimal lapras strat is only a 25 percent chance to happen unfortunately um you want lapras to get hit both turn one on lance and turn one on champion and it's a 50 50 whether or not that happens um, okay, let's see. It looks like Headstrong is going to be even or ahead by like tiny bits. Ahead by like 15 seconds right now on Dynam. So, with two controller strats, probably like 25 seconds ahead going into Victory Road. Um, but with Lapras, you want it to get K uh, hit with Hyper Beam here, so it takes damage. And if it takes damage, that means Air Slash plus Quick Attack from, from Pidgeot will KO it 100% of the time. So, if it takes damage here, then next battle you get a 50 percent chance gets hit and then um then it gets ko'd and you save like five ten seconds on champion yeah and the reason for that is that pikachu version you need one extra turn of setup right yeah on, on eevee version uh your the rival's ace is a Raichu, but on Pikachu version it's a Jolteon, and Jolteon just has a lot more special defense. So you need to be plus six generally, um, unless your star is really good, to hit it, to knock it out. Um, if you're really good, it's plus four. Well, all of these runners are very good, so yeah, this far it is. Headstrong okay. is going for two controller. Yep. Well, Naomi. Uh, Dynam had this turn one hit the Hydro Pump and KO'd. So she needs to at least match that to maintain her lead. Or apparent lead. Just hit it and knocks it out. Okay. So no difference there. Looks like Dynam did get the Air Slash plus Quick Attack into Lapras, so Lapras is down. 
And this saves a few seconds for Dynam. Zelda set up to plus six here on the Bio Plume. Click Psychic, and that's that's GG for Dynam. Yeah, one one Thunder World somewhere. Yep. And because there's only that, or because Lapras and Starmie are both uh, Water type, uh, if, even if Lapras was out, the order of the Pokemon would be the same. Yeah, that is, actually makes a difference in like what second Pokemon you use, especially on Agatha. Yeah. Um, you want Agatha, something you want that's fish. yeah, something that's weak to Thunderbolt. Um, because then it's basically guaranteed for the Weezing to come out, and otherwise there's a chance for the Gengar to come out. And the Gengar is really fast, and it will outspeed you, and it will kill you in one hit. Yep, and unfortunately in this game it's Gen 7, so dynamic speed does not exist yet. No, you need a turn for an X speed to work. Yep. Uh, another thing, Dynam hitting Alexa means he hit level 54 here on champ, so that's another like 5 seconds lost. Yeah, there are like all these little things in this, but like at this level, that's what makes the difference. Yep. Then we'll get to see what Dynam's final time is, and I'll pull up the race times just to check, because it's going to be close for both of them. Yeah, to be clear for people, we have the race time, like the official race time um, for, Dy for Dynam and Trevaria, and Headstrong has uh, her own race time. Okay, so we had the final time for Dynam. Hello. Which is... Hello. Hi, I'm going. here to speed run the post game interview. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how are you doing? Three minutes. Uh, good. Uh, Alexa bad. Not having Graveler bad. Bingus good. Actually worked. Forgot I had a super potion. Ended up using fresh water and potion to manipulate HP. That part was good. Bad XP early game. Was really scared. Didn't hit a bunch of ranges that I thought that I was supposed to hit. And I'll make a collage after this probably. Okay, go have fun with Corvame and Swoos and Trevaria in a few minutes. I hope All you right. enjoy lunch and very will you be uh, think. Will you be watching the rest uh, with Headstrong? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot. Um, huh. But best of luck to Headstrong as she finishes as well. And I see Trevaria finishing up as well. So GG's to her and good luck to Headstrong. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, have fun. All right. And bye. thank you for the race. Hello. Okay. Hello, Trevaria. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I, I do have to get going, so I'm gonna keep it short. Yeah, Dynam's already gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So I have a couple of things to say, though, before I, before I leave. <laughs> First of all, the bad thing. Uh, waiting like a minute for a star you to spawn again after the same thing happened last uh, round. That was very frustrating. But, yeah, it... you know, the good thing in all of this is that my 100% Hydro Pump accuracy across the tournament has stayed intact. How? I have not missed a single Hydro Pump. How? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's the one thing that the RNG was on my side for. Uh, yeah, but other than that, I made a couple of mistakes, especially in the lead four. I had some misclicks there. Uh, oh, well, what you gonna do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it felt like it was mostly the star that was like the big difference maker. Yeah. Yeah. And then you were probably like a bit fed up with that. Oh, Anyways, definitely. Congrats on being top seven. Thank yeah. you. That is really all that I could have hoped for. <laughs> and, and have fun right. uh, with your next race and uh, be Dynan. Uh, well, I guess we'll see who's better at trivia. Um... Yeah. Good luck with that. All right. That. Thank uh, you so much. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, so both of our first two racers who have finished are gone, because they have a prior engagement with games done quick. So yeah, that starts now. Now, what we are looking for is, does Headstrong beat a 305.59 time, and 
does she exit VR before two hours, 52 minutes flat? And remember, we're not looking at the timer in the bottom left now. We're looking at the timer in the top left of her screen. And I'll be interested to see if she grabs, if she grabs, um, the full restore. Yeah, I do believe Headstrong is like a advocate for two controller, but we will see for this. Yeah. So it takes like 25 seconds from here to leave. Yep, skipping full restore, so she will be locking into two controller Agatha at the very least. So she's about 21 seconds ahead right now of where Dynam was at this point. Yeah, so I mean, there are still a few fights, like, even with two controller where you can lose time. So this yep. can get still get, like, really close, but it is looking good for Headstrong. Yeah, the... The main difference between um, Eevee and Pikachu 2 controller is Eevee is, does not have Lapras. It has like Dodrio and Rapidash and Golduck. She has um, both Golduck and Dodrio available to her. What is important about those is they theoretically get one hit KO'd by Air Slash from uh, Champion's Pidgeot. It can miss, and and or they can live on like. Um, okay, she's brought in Dotrio. Yeah. Air Slash can miss, um, or they can live for whatever reason. Like Pidgeot can just target Starmie if it rolls a crit on Starmie as well. So. This isn't like 100% at this point. There's also the issue of um, she is going to be summoning turn two in Lance. You, we saw Dynam go into Lance with both controllers out. Uh, Headstrong will be desummoning after Agatha and then resummoning in Lance's room, or resum and then resummoning in Lance's battle. So that's a big difference. And Headstrong won't have early turnarounds, most likely. I didn't see all of her Exile usages, um, but I think uh, she should. She, be fine she, on that. she used she used one controller Samuel, so that's like one X item best. Yeah, I didn't see her Geo at all, so I'm not sure 100% on that. I think that math is right that if she did that, she should be fine. But there's a large portion where we didn't see anything, and there might have been an extra one used. For some, for some reason. Yeah. And to, to be clear, people, don't at the moment, don't look at the timer in the bottom left corner. The timer, like, in the top of Headstrong's stream is the, the key, this important one. And so that's Lorelei. And now we go on to Bruno. So the important, yeah, the nice thing about Bruno is like, because she has the second player in the um, in the party, the second Pokemon, uh, very likely to get Stealth Rock here from the Onyx, uh, which means it doesn't risk the faint range uh, by taking Earthquake most of the time. Yeah, and even then, like, Earthquake is not likely. Yeah. It's very likely to use Stealth Rocks here because you have a second controller. And even then, Earthquake is, like, not that strong from Onyx, because Onyx is, like, a Route 1 boss, so... It's whatever. It does, like, 30 to 40. And wouldn't put you in faint range, most likely, from this range. 
yeah, that's why this uh, like fighting elite four member has a rock Pokemon instead of like a primate. Primate would have been way cooler. But... Yeah, agree. I I don't understand the Onyx, but I guess it just is what it is. Yeah, you can see that there are no turnarounds here. Like, yeah. whenever you use a super effective move or your heal, uh, there's like a little turnaround. You will see it on the next fight on Agatha. And like every time it like looks back at you, like, look how good I'm doing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm really good here. I'm... Are you happy with me? No. And then We're a speedrunners are like, no. Friendship is slow. And then we do see the second controller come out here so she doesn't have to heal between battles. Yeah, I, I really like the consistency of the two controller, E4. Okay, it looks like Headstrong is about 23 seconds ahead right now. I don't have much to say, it's just this strategy is very consistent and the main thing that decides whether or not she wins or loses is Dodrio getting targeted and KO'd turn 1 of Champion and a potential crit on Lance turn 1. That is like the main decider here. Yeah. Also, thank you to Etiquette for pioneering the Agatha 2 controller strat. The, the person in chat who can't, like, spell today. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I ran this game, like, two and a half years ago when it was still, like, one controller fights, and I... It was, like, you, you just lost quite a few runs in the E4. I'm sorry, I got, there's nothing else to do right now besides rib chat. It's just... It's, it's Etiquette's idea. Oh yeah, we also see Headstrong doing plus four skull on these Gengars, so avoiding those turnarounds. Yeah, it does have the special attack stat. The yeah, end, uh, you can elixir back up to them psychics. Yep, so won't have to do any like uh, Thunderbolt on Lance or anything because was able to do the Skull on Golbat. Because if you Elixir and then use a Psychic that same turn, it'll subtract one still. Okay, so entering Lance 1 controller will most likely be summoning Dodrio turn 2. So she'll set up an X speed here, summon, and then double X special, then X special attack Psychic. 26 seconds difference. Largely, does she get Hyper Ring crit here? Nope. Yeah, so now it's uh, all, uh, all down to one. Uh... And even then, I think, like, that's not. 20 seconds. Yeah, it should be... That should be it. It's getting close, but it's not 20 seconds. Yeah, I think even if Dodrio lives, um, the, the main thing there would be, like, mis-inputting Dodrio moves. Like, putting an agility over, like, Drill Pack. And even then, agility is quick, like... Instant. Yeah. And Lapras is, um... Lapras also gain levels at this point of the game as well. So there's not much difference there. 
and Dynam also gained an extra level on Stormy on Champ because of the Alexa experience. And level 53, the timer is racing. 140 something special attack. So that's good. Yeah, you always look here because it's like a range, but even that with two controller strats. Uh, the Dodrio is like the the next uh, Pokemon is uh, uh, the Dragonite, and I remember like just losing so many runs to that Dragonite. Yeah, and that just like th those kinds of things, like losing a run to Agatha, losing a run to the Dragonite, losing a run to the Pidgeot in the next. Uh, those are like very demotivating. Yeah, they're not a thing that you want to happen. So, Especially so in a race. Yes, so for me, like, the two controller strats are, like, so much... I, I'm so much happier to run this game because of that. But who will the champion be? So about a 23 second differential right now. Yeah, in that sense, Dodrio living would be the the hypest. The most hype. There's also something she could do that's interesting. Um, but I don't think she will. That's a really bad idea on Eevee, I think. Yeah, she's not doing it. What? Uh, turn one, uh, just Thunderbolt and next special attack. It's really bad, and... Oh no. Okay, Dodria's down. Yeah. That should be it. Okay, plus four psychic. Just waiting now for the moves to be clicked in. Yeah, and a lot of psychics and one like Thunderbolt. one uh, Thunderbolt in between. Plenty of special attack that uh, you can psychic the Marowak. Mm And slow bro, we just need to see Thunderbolt, and I believe has zero sidekicks left, so I can't misclick that. Yep. And that is it. Most likely, uh, 30530 something. Yeah, like a 30535 or something. So we just need to see, like, her click in the, the thing, and then we can say Hedgedronk has advanced to the finals. Yeah, and who, who she'll face uh, all depends on the wheel. Yes, which we totally prepared. No, I'm not saying you prepared an etiquette. I'm saying we prepared it. Yeah, Sandy prepared it. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's time. 3.05.26 is the final time. 
So a win by about 30 seconds. Yeah, it was a, a bit difficult to uh, to follow uh, with this delay. Hello, Headstrong. How are you doing? I am so confused. Well, Why are you GGs? so confused? <laughs> Thanks for the GGs. I, I'm just confused how I ended up winning in the first place, and I am so sorry for what happened. I, That's fine. I'm not going to share details you can if you want but dynam hit alexa and that's unfortunate yeah well so the reason why i was late is because i was so i didn't sleep very well last night and i didn't think i was very tired and i laid down to meditate and that's why i mentioned in the discord saying i'd be about 15 minutes because that takes about 10 to 15 minutes and i fell asleep in the middle of meditating <laughs> yeah that happens. So that's why I'm late. <laughs> you, you were playing Pokemon Sleep, or? <laughs> yeah, trying to get that, trying to get those Pokemons in, I guess. So um, okay, a few things about your run. You mean the RNG? <laughs> uh, what questions? Um, not RNG. Uh, the Route Six skip thing, right? Yeah. How did you feel after that? Like, because you were like started 18 minutes later right like how did the whole like 18 minute delay like were you more pessimistic about the run throughout? so i was pretty not pessimistic originally when i went into it just trying to do my best and then i got like worse rng at the beginning of the game i've ever had <laughs> And then the Mount Moon went really well, and so I was feeling a bit better after that. Same thing with Cerulean. And then I hit the trainer, and I was... That that just sucked. I was very confused why I actually hit that trainer, because I thought I was fine. But then I got stopped. Um, and then I had, I had my wife telling me kind of where things were at roughly, because I don't ever have the stream up, but since there's such a big gap, like... Kind of hard to know anything, so I figured I'd just kind of play my own game and see how it went. Yeah, I can tell you at like when you were leaving Rock Tunnel, you were at 34, and both Dynam and Triv were at like 32 and 33, 18 minutes later into the run. Yeah, that was absurd. No, I had, I had, a, I had a good amount of Pokemon, I just kept breaking out. I think I had like eight breakouts, I don't know, it was, I stopped counting, everything was breaking out. Hey, that's a good, like, you know, 2020 time, like, with only eight breakouts, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the, the Pikachu broke out twice, the Weedle broke out once, right at the start. Mm -hmm. Gastly broke out, Vulpix broke out. Yeah, and that Vulpix was, like, so close to hitting an excellent, too, I remember. Yeah, it was incredibly close. I thought I was fine throwing it, and it just didn't hit it. I was like, okay, well, this usually gets in anyway. <laughs> but, no. Yeah, uh, but your, your Route 10 and Rock Tunnel really, like, brought this room back. Yeah, those were really good overall. I don't know what happened in the middle of the game, because it, when I was com I've been comparing to my PV splits the whole run, and I lost so much more time in the mid-game than I thought I was going to be losing. Like, I thought I was on that, like, 302, 303 pace out of Rock Tunnel, and then all of a sudden I was losing minutes on every split. <laughs> so, I, I don't really 100% know what happened in the mid-game. Like, I know some of my fights were poor. Like, Jesse and James was dumb because the Rhyhorn didn't kill the Arbok, and then the Eevee died and whatnot, but... Yeah, and then another thing died, and then all of that. Yeah, yeah there were chopped dice, you had to revive it. Yeah, it was really weird, my game. Like, I don't know how much I lost to that, how much I lost to anything else. It's just strange. And also, like, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure about your PB, but, like, did you have better special tech? You didn't have, I think, any special tech AVs, they all went into attack. Oh, for uh, my Eevee? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what my I don't remember what I had for my PB for for that, but it was I got to Sizzly Slight the Haunters, which was nice. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's like a high special tech, and especially in that mid section, like saves so much time. Oh yeah, 
No, I, I, I was I was really happy that I got double edge early so that I could do uh, the drowsy strat and then I double edged for the Voltorb and the the, the Rattata. Like I made hideout. It definitely makes hideout so much better. Yeah. A critical fairy with headbutt. That was funny. Did it Oko? Yeah, it Okoed. Okay, good, good, good. Because, like, we are, like, it's so hard to, like, follow everything when there's, like, three different yes. people, like, different points of the run by, like, 18 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was fun. Sorry about that. It's fine. It's just, like, a new experience for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so now the finals is going to be randomly selected three people out of the pool of Etchy, New Amber, and you, Headstrong. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that's a scary match. <laughs> For them, right? match. <laughs> I went, what was it, two? Was it two and one with etiquette? So maybe I can... Was it two and one or was it one and one with etiquette? I don't remember. I think it but, was one and one, and this was this could have been the third one. Yeah, that's what it was. But I went one and one with etiquette, so maybe I can go one and one with that G. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Like like chat has been saying, let's go women. <laughs> I mean Echi is the only Pika as well in the in the final. I would like to see new Amber, new underscore Amber play Pika. No. Um, it would be funny, admittedly. No, Eevee, Eevee, Eevee is against the Pika. It's it's it should be like why is Etchy not running Eevee? That's the question. Exactly. Etchy's running the wrong one. Yeah. What's the fastest time, even by Etchy? <laughs> They're all Eevee. Yep. Eevee's faster. Well, we'll see how that pans out in a race setting, and, where and, Pikachu and it's, needs and more it's things e to go right. It seems like Twitch yet agrees, so... <laughs> I just noticed I forgot. I didn't catch a Pidgey, ever. I had no Pidgey. Yeah, yeah but you had Pidgeotto such a high... 17. Hmm? You got the Pidgeotto on 17, right? No, I passed by like three Pidgeottos because I said screw Pidgeotto, I'd rather catch a coughing. Yeah, because you had 54 planned, right? Yeah, it's 54 planned, yeah. and then I took off the Pidgey, and then I had 49 planned. I was like, well, I'll just catch coughing. Yeah, and not Magmar. Yeah, Magmar would be terrible. Okay. <sighs> Okay, um, I think that's it for us then. There's only one more thing left to do. There's only one yeah. more race. I spin the wheel. Do you have any more, any like final thoughts, Hedgehog? Any shout outs? Uh, just shout out to the other racers. Sorry, and sorry that they had to, I heard they had to leave really quickly. Sorry that that all happened, but shout outs to them. They're awesome. It's fine. They get to rematch now immediately <laughs> in a different game. In a different game. While getting hurled trivia questions at them. Okay, yeah, well, I think... It. I think with that, then, um... We can wrap up here. But one more thing. I have one more thing for you, chat. A little surprise. You know what it is? There's no wheel. There's no wheel. It's just Headstrong, uh, Etchy, and new, new underscore Amber. Just click... Exclamation point slots. Dearest, please end the stream now. Ray GDQ, somebody cut me off, please. Dearest, please. I, I don't want it. Please. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.